Hello. <laughs> God, I can't believe we're already at Spirit of Justice. That's insane. <laughs> My God. No one's really here yet, but you know what? Whatever. Sorry, I am kind of late today, I guess. Anyways, this time, things are very, very, very different. <laughs> um, and also, the names have been really punny up until now, right? They are about to enter a whole new fucking level, I swear. It's just gonna be like... It's so dumb, honestly. I also think I have the DLC for it, though I don't really know. I have to start the game and save and check. <laughs> I guess I could have done that beforehand, but no, I didn't want to. I'm just waiting for people to show up, I guess. There is this fucking Christian guy on Twitter that just like keeps like <laughs> posting stuff <laughs> and people are responding <laughs> with memes. Oh my god, I love that, honestly. Damn it, why are no one here? Maybe if I hold on my mm -mm -mm. Ah no damn it Dumb I am dumb I'm so fucking dumb. Damn it, what? You know what? Screw it, just.
<laughs> Injustice we trusted. I can say that he's not coming back this time. Eh. Hello. Damn, I just... <laughs> I started and then it was like, me, no one's here, I wanna cry, me. <laughs> Well, um, I, <laughs> you missed Fulbright, it's all right. <laughs> he was okay, I guess. Um, anyways, this time, the names, they're on a whole other fucking level. I'm gonna just say that, like, straight out. Um, you're used to them being punny, but this is, like, on a whole other fucking level. And some of them, you need, like, some time to, like, understand them. I know that, it, like, the first one, I was like, I don't get it at first. And then I was like, oh, I get it. <laughs> Anyways, I'll try to explain them, like, to the best of my abilities. It's the pun special. Oh, my God. You have no idea. So, yeah, we have Spirit of Justice. Let's fucking go. There we go. There's some background music here, so I had to mute the entire thing. God, it's loud for me. I'm sure it's fine for you, but loud for me. Okay. <clears throat> so we actually have options now. So we can, like, fix stuff. Like, hello? We can have cutscene subtitles. Consultation? I can turn that off. I don't need that. Because I've played it before. <laughs> Turn up the Swedish. On the western edge of the Far East. Lies a peaceful country of spirit mediums and mystery. The kingdom of Kuraiden. But now oh, S -E. the flames of revolution sound effect are threatening. To consume it whole. Oh, fuck! That's right. That's something I wanted to do. But things like revolt and revolution. Man, I can still do it. But the furthest things from my mind when I first arrived in this land. No, it's not America. Nice. Why does it do that every time I... That doesn't make sense, whatever. Damn it. More? Alright. Here in Kurain. Death is not the end. Even after death, the soul lives on in the twilight realm. And priestesses can commune with the spirits of the dead. Fear not death. In the name of the Holy Mother. Fear only the impurities of your soul. This blight on my soul. I'll have the child take the blame. Hippie Jesus. <laughs> I mean, technically, uh, Jesus was a hippie, but... <laughs> Why does it do that? Okay, you know what? Fuck it. Uh, oh, is it because I have this thing open? Maybe. Okay, uh, well, now I can do the thing I wanted to do, anyways. And I gotta go here and here, and actually, uh, let me do this so you can, like, see properly what I'm gonna do. Because I kind of forgot to do that beforehand. 
Now, where is the thing I'm looking for? There we go. Ta -da! <laughs> can also turn off the scan lines for a while just so you can actually like see and also turn off the color source. Look. Doesn't it look so cool? Anyways. New courtroom. Indeed. What was I uh, thinking? Oh, the greens. There we go. Kingdom of Kurain. Whew, I'm finally here. So this is the kingdom of Kurain, huh? What a long trip. I wonder how many hours I was in the air. Just look at this place. Get a load of this street. It really feels like I'm in another world here. And that gorgeous temple. I read that's the center of town. A fucking tourist. <laughs> wow, an ox right in the middle of the street. I have to get a picture of that. Excuse me, sir? I wonder what kind of bird that is. I've never seen anything like it. That's quite a crest it has in his head. Excuse me, sir. What? Oh, yes. Pardon me, but are you Mr. Wright? Uh, yes, that's right. Oops. I hope he hasn't been trying to get my attention all this time. Wait a minute. Are you? That's right. Here we fucking go. So I was like, I thought, I thought, at first I thought his name was a pun on alibi. No, his name is I'll be your guide. As an I'll be your guide. I'll be your guide, your guide. I don't know, honestly. I'm like trying, to, I'm still trying to figure out how to pronounce some of these names. Actually, before I do that, uh, let me just save here real quick and return to title and see if my DLC is here. <laughs> oh, sweet. Ooh. Costumes. Oh, you know, we gotta do it to him. You know, we gotta do it to him. Okay, we got the default. And we got the tiger! Yes, let's fucking go! Oh my god, yes! Yes, you can wear your Gakuran and you can wear très bien. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Sweet. Now we got the crew. <laughs> anyway, back to the game. No, back to the game. I'm a monk in training at Temple Temple. And I'll be your guide around town. You, w w will you now? I'll be your guide. God damn it. Like I said, these names are the dumbest shit ever. <laughs> and I wouldn't have it any other way, honestly. It's very nice to meet you. Hapiraki? Uh, happy what now? Hapiraki. That's how we greet people in Kurain. It's like hello or how do you do? It's a pretty handy expression to know. Okay, let me give it a try. Hello, I'm Phoenix Wright. Hapiraki. My name is Phoenix Wright and I run a small law office. Well, that's what I do back home, anyway. Right now, I'm just a traveler, a stranger in a strange land. Welcome to our country. Welcome to the kingdom of Kurain. Land of spirit mediums and mystery. This is for you. To celebrate your arrival. Speaking of mystery, what is this mysterious green lump exactly? Allow me to explain. This is a famous Kuraini sweet bun. It's called a Magatamam. Or soul bun. Oh my god. 
It's shaped like a magatama. It's so yummy. It'll send your soul right to the Twilight Realm. That doesn't exactly make me eager to try it. Thanks. I think I'll indulge later. I'll be 20 damas. Thank you for your patronage. I have to pay? I always have plenty of those on hand, so just let me know if you ever want any more. No wonder his bag looks so heavy. It's stuffed with all the tools of his trade. Oops, I almost forgot to tell you something really important. It's about Miss Maya. She can't come see you for a few days yet. Yeah, when I called her from the airport, she said she was still training up in the mountains. I told her I'd wait for her here. Either way, I was glad to hear she's in good spirits. Maya Fay. She's a spirit medium who used to work as my assistant. I came all the way out here to celebrate the end of her ascetic training with her. Albi, this is my first time in this country, so I'll be counting on you, okay? You got it, sir. Please don't hesitate if you need anything at all. Do you mean aesthetic? <laughs> what is aesthetic? <laughs> As is fuck. <laughs> aesthetic is written A E S T H E T I C. Maya was right when she told me I could leave everything in your capable hands. Ah, oh, shucks, she said that. That sure was nice of her. He has a tooth missing. I had a chance to show Miss Maya around a little bit too. If there's one person Maya was worried about, it's me. Because we both know trouble likes to follow you wherever you go, she said. Hmm. <laughs> that girl worries too much. You sure came early to the party, Mr. Wright, sir. I mean, Miss Maya won't be done with her training for another two weeks. Uh, I hate to admit it, but I came early because I was worried about her, too. Oh well, you know, <laughs> I thought I'd get in a little sightseeing first. Ooh, sightseeing! Well, I'm your man for that. I'll show you all the best sights this country has to offer. Thanks, that will be great. I guess Albi takes his guide, uh, his, his guide, his job very seriously. Well, what are we waiting for? Th those sights aren't going to see themselves. Yikes, you don't have to shove. First stop, Temple Temple, right here in the center of town. There's something there I really want to show you. Wow, it's even more impressive up close. Allow me to explain. This is the heart of our town, Tempul Temple. It was created by the founder of Kurainism, the Holy Mother herself. I'm training right here at this temple to be a monk someday. I read that the people of this country are all adherents of Kurainism. According to my guidebook, it's a religion in which an ancestral spirits are venerated. The Holy Mother was a great spirit medium who could commune with our ancestors' souls. And spirit mediums become queen to this... Queen to this day, and direct descendants of the Holy Mother. A spirit medium rules the entire country, huh? Talk about power and influence. The main thing you'll want to see when you come to Temple Temple is... The Dance of Devotion Rites. Dance of Devotion takes place twice, once in the morning and once in the afternoon. This dance, along with the Song of Ceremony, is performed in offering to the Holy Mother. <laughs> the Dance of Devotion has the power to summon forth- oh my god. Hold it! Slow down! Hold on, I want- I actually want to read what he has to say here. Has the power to summon forth a soul from the Twilight Realm. In Kurainism, we believe the soul is carried by the sacred Kurainese butterfly. Its wings form a loop that wraps around the soul to transport it. 
Nice. I can't remember all of that at once. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I got a little overexcited. Anyway, the main thing I got from all that is that you really, really love your country. <laughs> well, that's sure true. I like this kid. He pours his heart into everything he does. Let's see. I guess I just explained about half what I usually explain. So I'll give you a special discount and only charge you 10 damas for the, t for the tour fee. Thank you for your patronage. I guess he pours his heart into aggressive salesmanship too. Don't Google anything, all right? I'm pretty sure this is all fictional, so. Come to think of it, Miss Maya told me she could tell, she could tell I love my country too. We stood here for about an hour while I told her about the Holy Mother. Really, an hour? I hope that counted as patience training. She seemed really interested too. She listened to my whole speech. Huh. That doesn't sound like the Maya I know. Miss Maya is so kind and nice. She treats me really well, like a little brother. She's kind of like a big sister to me. This is Maya Faye you're talking about, right? Maybe she's grown up since I last saw her. Oh no! What's the matter? Is it that time already? We have to hurry into the temple right away. Yeah, first, let me give you this lyrics card for the Song of Ceremony I told you about. There's an English translation of the lyrics there too, so give it a read, okay? Let's go. But why the big rush? If we don't hurry, we'll miss the beginning of her benevolence's dance of devotion. Her benevolence. <laughs> Could I even didn't believe in long skirts? Okay, so it is your guide. I'll be your guide. Well, that just happened. Let me in! Why won't you let me in? Because you're a foreigner. What business could you have with this court? I told you, my friend is on trial in there. The police raided the temple in the middle of the dance performance yesterday. Let me in, let me in. <laughs> I was thinking of the same thing. And arrested Albie on suspicion of treason. I was worried about Albie, so I just had to come see his trial. A trial isn't a tourist attraction, so clear off. If you want a picture for your scrapbook, take one of me and get out of here. Guns. Look, you got it all wrong. Just great. Well, I guess there's only one thing to do. I'm a lawyer. Yes, I'm a foreigner, but I'm not your average foreigner. What? I'm actually a lawyer. Back at home, anyway. 
What? A lawyer? I can't. That's not possible. What's he so shocked about? Well, whatever. Now's my chance. Nothing wrong with a lawyer entering a courthouse, right? Is that what he said? Wait. Get back here, you. What did you say, actually? Courtroom. Okay. Close enough, I guess. So this is the Kurainese courtroom. Wait, isn't that her benevolence? What's she doing here in court? The divination seance has been performed. will now hand down my verdict against the accused. What? A verdict already? But the trial only just started! Guilty? And there's gotta be some kind of mistake! Please take another look! Seances performed by Princess Rafa are infallible. They show only the truth. What right do you have to question her abilities? But I... I didn't... Isn't it ironic that you, a devout adherent of Kurainism, would dare doubt her insights? <laughs> Non-believers will only be met with suffering in the Twilight Realm, you know. But I didn't do it! Your benevolence! Allow me to explain! I beg of you! Be silent, impudent whelp. There is no merit to be had in indulging the ramblings born of a criminal's unclean soul. But... What in the world is going on here? The judge made his ruling based on something called a divination seance. What is Albie's attorney doing? Wait a minute. Where is Albie's attorney? Why is this happening? I didn't do anything wrong. Foolish child. Doubting the divination seance is tantamount to doubting the Holy Mother herself. Your Majesty, as royal priestess and in the name of the Holy Mother, I command you. Impose the highest penalty against this unclean soul. As you command, so shall it be done, your benevolence. May her holiness grant us her divine favor. Ur Dihara Kurain. What? That suit. <laughs> there is a reason why I wore orange today, it just... <laughs> Wait just one moment. Here. Oh, me and my big mouth. Now what? Mr. Wright, what are you doing here, sir? Well, I'm in it now, so I have to do this right. I mean, to be fair, this matches, like, the environment way better than his, his regular suit. No, he stole the look from, uh, his... The phony Nick. The phonix. Sinif, as I call them. No, skinny if that's it. So I have to do this right. Yep. Your Honor, it's too soon to give your verdict. This trial has only been underway for a few minutes. Hey, excuse me? Who on earth are you? I'm, well... An ordinary tourist, Your Honor. Just passing through. Ah, a tourist, are you? Apiraki. 
And more impor importantly, where is this boy's defense attorney? Defense attorney. Ha 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 ha. Whatever are you talking about? He doesn't need a defense attorney. Wait, what? Of course. I don't I don't know what voice to give him, and I don't want to give him the, the, the judge voice because even though this is the judge, but it's not the same, you know? Of course you wouldn't be aware, being a foreigner and all. But we have no need for defense attorneys here in the kingdom of Kurain. We leave it all up to her benevolence the sacred power of spirit communion. Her divination seances determine all. What? But surely you see how unfair that is. What kind of insane court system are they running here? You would dare mock me, you barb-headed buffoon. If you value your life, you will leave post-haste. Or shall I summon the bailiff? The bailiff is that big scary dude with the big scary gun, isn't he? I'm sure he would be happy to oblige you with a bullet or two as a souvenir of your travels. At the cost of an arm and a leg, no doubt. Hold on! Mr. Wright has nothing to do with any of this. I'll be. I appreciate what you're trying to do, Mr. Wright, but never mind about me. You just go ahead and go see Miss Maya. But... Forget about me. You have to go now. I'm sure you can find another guide. There were lots more places I wanted to show you. But it looks like I won't get a chance now. I'm sorry. That poor kid. He's trying to put on a brave face, but look how terrified he is. What can I do? What should I do? Go find my <laughs> Fuck this kid! The whole reason I came to this country was to see Maya. And I'm just an outsider here with no knowledge of the way they do things. But I'm still a defense attorney first and foremost. I can't just let a verdict be handed down with nobody standing in Albi's corner. If Albi doesn't have a defense attorney, then I'll do it. I'll defend him. Mr. Kor, defend him? You can't be serious. Did you hear that? Is he out of his mind? Heaven forbid. Defend me, Mr. Wright. What are you saying? You can't do that. I most certainly can. Don't worry, I'm quite used to tackling all sorts of trials. Besides, can you imagine how furious Maya would be if I let anything happen to you? Mr. Wright... You are but a naive tourist, ignorant of our ways. But if you are smart, you will heed my advice. Do not pursue this matter any further. Looks like defending somebody is easier said than done in this country. Bailiff, throw this man out. Your Majesty, if you please. You have something to say, Mr. Payne. <laughs> Why not allow it, Your Majesty? Why not have him defend the accused? It could prove very interesting. Right, Mr. Phoenix, right? Right, Mr. Whoever you are. Prosecutor, are you acquainted with this traveler? That's Chief Prosecutor, Your Majesty. And yes, I am acquainted with him. God. Pain being a pain in the ass as per usual. <laughs> eh. He's a defense attorney for my native land. I've had dealings with him in the courtroom before. Heavens to Betsy. What? Mr. Wright, you're a... Defense attorney? A defense attorney? Well, this is a shock. You may be surprised to hear that I have more than ten years of experience. I guess there aren't all that many lawyers around here. Your Majesty, would you kindly allow us to proceed in the manner of my own country? But Mr. Payne, I've already made a ruling in this case. 
Eh, call it nostalgia, if you will, but I am most eager to give it a try. Hmm. I have a previous engagement, you see. A class together with a missus. Your Majesty, I agree we should have a whack at it. It sounds amusing. A score of years have passed since we last saw a defense attorney in this courtroom. A score? As in 20 years? What's the deal with this country? Mr. Payne, I want that barbed head brought to me on a stick. As you wish, your benevolence. I, Chief Prosecutor Payne, will see to it myself. Very well, Mr. Payne. If that is what you and her benevolence want, I will... A quiche? I'm sorry, can we not? <laughs> can we not with the words I don't know? Uh, quiz. A quiz. I'm sorry? A quiche? That's not how you write quiche, but... Well, a quiz. Oh, I forgot to read what it actually means. Uh... Ah, comply. Without protest. I see. Well, as for the defense, I hope you are prepared for every eventu eventuality. Every eventuality? What is he talking about? There, are you satisfied now, Mr. Wright? Yes, thank you, Mr. Payne. I'm sorry for not remembering you earlier. That's Chief Prosecutor, or the Incredible Pain, as I am also known in this country. And you'll see soon enough just why that is. When you're forced to capitulate to me before this very court of law. <laughs> why is he so strangely confident? And not only that, but... What's with the gallery? Just you watch. That defense attorney will try and twist the truth. You can bet on it. Get him, Chief Prosecutor! Crush that defense devil! This is way more lawyer hate than even back home. Now, if you would please give your opening argument once again, Mr. Payne. Certainly, your majesty. The accused is charged with two crimes. Larceny and murder. Yesterday, the Founder's Orb was stolen from the treasure room of Temple Temple. In addition to the theft, two other things were discovered in the treasure room. The dead body of Mr. Patrol. <sighs> Let it sink in. Mr. Patrol. Yes. <laughs> Patrol. Uh. And the empty treasure box that housed the orb, which Mr. Roll was in charge of guarding. We believe that Mr. Roll was mortar mortared, murdered by the thief who stole the treasure. To kill a guard armed with a gun. What a terrifyingly bold act. Couldn't agree more, your majesty. Please allow me to submit as evidence this victim's autopsy report and crime photo. Hmm, it's been a long time since we had evidence presented in court as well. It's kind of refreshing, actually. <laughs> we may rely on the power of the seances, but our police still carry out investigations. Thus, any proof I provide is indisputable. Oh, really? Well, forgive me if I don't just take your word for it. I can check the evidence out myself by, check by looking at them in the court record. I'll see just how thorough you and your police were, Mr. Payne. Such a deplorable crime. Profiles. He's nine. Oh wow, my hair just said nope. Not doing it. Sorry. Oh boy, I'll be your guide. 
Song of Ceremony. When dragon and tiger battle, the founder offers divine protection. When the butterfly embraces the mitama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. Cerebral contusion from a head injury. In the crane photo. Sweet. And the audacity of stealing the sacred treasure of her holiness. Our founding mother. What the hell is that? It's a crime that strikes at the very heart of our nation. Exactly, your majesty. We mustn't let the culprit get away with these heinous deeds. Indeed, such deeds are best described as treason against the crown. Is this treasure really such a valuable object? I don't like how... Eh. No, stop. Eh. A bit more. Up. That's a bit better. How can you even ask such a thing? Of course it is. Why, sealed within this treasure is the very soul of the Mitama of the Holy Mother. Her soul is sealed within the treasure. I think I'll take that with a grain of salt. Mm -hmm. You don't believe it, do you? Of course I believe it. Something tells me I'd better play along. Yeah, Phoenix, they have guns. <laughs> hmm, this kind of irreverence is exactly why I dislike defense attorneys so much. Ah, uh, okay. Your Honor, uh, your, your Majesty? What is it now? This treasure, I've never seen it, so it's a little hard for me to imagine. Could I see a photo of it or something? Of all the outlandish requests, you defense attorneys are truly beyond the pale. He's been getting awfully angry with me, and are those veins popping out of his forehead? It's forbidden for anyone outside of the royal family to view the treasure itself. They say that anyone without the proper spiritual power would be blinded instantly. That is why the average person has never seen the treasure, Mr. Wright. Well, then look for a blind person? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I guess there are national treasures that are off limits to the public back home too. For the benefit of this shamelessly uninformed defense, let me share this newspaper article. It includes photos taken about eight years ago when the treasure was unearthed. And these are the only public photos of the outer box in existence. What's more, the treasure box only leaves the temple, temple's treasure room but once a year, for a special New Year's rite that takes place in the, at the palace. Therefore, this treasure box has only ever been seen by a handful of people. I hear there's been a string of thefts lately at the of historic artifacts from the temple. Right, your majesty. Inexcusable thievery of precious national treasures for personal gain. And the culprit is the accused. So he used his position as monk in training to get his hands on the treasure, is that it? The accused family is by no means wealthy. To help with family finances, he works as a tour guide in addition to his... Ascetic? Ascetic? What's the ascetic? Ascetic? No, uh, 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 sec. Thick. Ascetic, okay. What do you mean? God damn it, damn ads! I don't care! Fuck off! Just let me see what it means. A person dedicates his or her life to a pursuit of, of contemplative. Ideals and practices extreme self-denial or self-mortification for religious reasons. I see. Thank you for giving an excellent outline of the case, Mr. Payne. And now then, no more questions from the defense, I presume. What? No, I do have questions. Even more, but you just ask the bunch. Well, make it snappy. My class starts in just a few short minutes. What? Are you still planning on going to that thing? There's still a lot I don't know about the case. I should ask now while I have the chance. Let's see, what else do I need to know more about? 
Weapon? Let's try a crime scene. Mr. Payne, where did the crime take place? What? As I already stated, it was in the treasure room of the temple. Oops, that's right. A oh, dumbass. Hmm. Have you even been paying attention? These lying lawyers, not only do they lack morals, but memory too. He apparently has all the brain power for barring your chicken, your majesty. Oh, 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 that explains why he has a crest like a rooster. No matter where I go in the world, the insults are always the same. Your Majesty, please let me try again. Let's see, what else do I need to know more about? The weapon, then. Mr. Payne, what was the murder weapon? The murder weapon was the treasure box itself. The empty treasure box left at the scene had a large bloodstain on it. How utterly reprehensible, using the sacred treasure box for murder. The accused came to the treasure room with the express purpose of stealing the treasure. He climbed the altar stairs and snatched the box, ready to abscond with the, tre with the treasure. But he was discovered by Mr. Roll, who had come to the room in, in the course of his rounds. After walloping Mr. Roll on the head with the treasure box, the accused forced the bloodied housing open and made off with the treasure inside. <laughs> Alright. But the defendant is just a little boy. I hardly think he would be able to hit the victim, a grown man, on the head. Ah, a very good point, Mr. Wright. But I'm afraid that won't help you. At the time of the crime, the accused was on the stairs leading up to the altar. The accused's elevated position would more than make up for their difference in stature. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Ha 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 ha. Mr. Payne, your reasoning is flawless. What an elegant argument. Hats off to you, Chief Prosecutor. Your title is obviously well earned. Well, the accused's guilt is certainly conclusive. Unless there is anything else, I am ready to announce my verdict. Very well, in that case, I find the accused. Just one moment, Your Majesty. Don't, don't you think you're rushing the verdict just a little bit? I told you, I have plans to attend to, and... Oh, I'm late. It's already started. How did the time fly by so fast? He's still stuck on that? We haven't even had... We haven't even heard the defendant's side of the story yet. Your Majesty, the defense asserts its right to cross-examine the defendant. Huh? Did I say something funny? Cross-examine the... What do you mean by that? What? What do you mean, what do I mean? I seem to have some dim recollection of the process, but I can't quite recall. And little wonder, a so-called defendant hasn't been questioned in over 20 years. Should I even be surprised anymore? Anyway, I demand we let the defendant, or the accused, tell his side of the story. Is that really necessary? Of course it's necessary, your majesty. <laughs> what harm could it do? I say we allow the boy to speak, your majesty. Though I doubt he'll have anything of relevance to say. <laughs> oh, how kind of you, your royal painness. Hmm, very well, as long as it's okay with you, Mr. Payne. I'm already hopelessly late for my class, anyway. In that case, the prosecution calls the accused back to the witness stand. Oh, but before we do, I'd better call my wife and apologize for missing that class. Any objections? Go for it, your majesty. Accused, state your name and occupation again, if you would. I'll be your guide. I've been training to be a monk, and I'm a tour guide, too. Huh. Why me? Now, where were we? Cross-examining the defendant, your, your majesty. Right, right. Let's do that, then. 
The defense attorney's insistence, I might add. Huh. He sounds a little dispirited. His wife must have given him a piece of her mind. Well, the defense had better get to it and make it quick, if you please. The defense? Mr. Wright, I didn't know you were a lawyer. Well, I am, and I am here to defend you, Albie. Don't worry. All you have to do is tell the truth, and you'll be all right. You... you tricked me! What? If I knew you were a lawyer, I wouldn't have given you that tour. I give back that Magataman I gave you, or yes, gave you yesterday. Albie, what's gotten into you? Don't talk to me! You... you disgust me! Now even Albie's against me, but why? <laughs> this must be a new experience for you, Mr. Wright, being loathed by a client. Now, then accused, please give the, the court your testimony. The incident occurred around noon, during the break between the morning and afternoon dances of devotion. I want you to tell the court what you were doing around that time. Alright. Kill Mr. Roll, and I didn't steal the, steal the treasure. I'm not allowed to go anywhere near the treasure room. I never even seen that treasure box with the green Kuraini's butterfly on it. Oh my God, dumb, 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 dumb. We don't even know that it has green. Uh. Oh, for sure. When the incident happened, I was in the hallway planning on my tour route. Are you well acquainted with the victim? Yes, he used to chat with me whenever we ran into each other in the temple. Mr. Rowe was a monk in training when he was a kid too, you know. I bet Albia looked up to him. He had to give that up and go to work when his family needed money. That's why he became a guard, but at least that way he could still stay on at the temple. He was so proud when he was put in charge of guarding this treasure box. He even got to carry the box to the palace for the New Year's rite. The victim's parents apparently both died relatively young, so Mr. Rowe had to support his younger brothers and sisters as well. But even with his job as a security guard, I'm sure things couldn't have been easy for him. It sounds like his circumstances in Albies were very similar. Mr. Rowe encouraged me to never give up. Albie, you train hard and make sure you become a monk one day. Don't end up like me, he said. He'd say... He was always cheering me on in my training and in my tour guide business, too. Why in the world would I kill a nice man like that? Yes, yes, I see. You expressed yourself well. Defense, now that you've heard the accused's account, are you finally satisfied? If so, let's draw this to an expedi expeditious conclusion. Your Majesty, I haven't even cross-examined the defendant yet. Hmm? That wasn't the end of it. It's been so long, I don't rightly recall what this cross-examining thing is all about. A judge who doesn't know what a cross-examination is. What fresh hell is this? I really do wish I could remember how it works. Should I give the judge a refresher on cross-examination? Meh. <laughs> Better save my breath. The judge doesn't exactly seem like a model student. I'll just have to watch and see how it's done. Well, I already know what I have to do, so... Okay, actually, hold on. Uh, let me save real quick. Return to title and do some... fix some options. Text skip all. Sure, that's fine. There we go. Objection! Dumb. Oh, Albie, why would you lie to me? So you say you've never laid eyes on the treasure box, is that right? That's right. It's forbidden, so I'd never do that. 
In that case, how did you know there was a green butterfly on it? Huh? Because I saw the picture of it in that newspaper article. Nope, take another look. These photos are in black and white. You couldn't possibly tell what color the butterfly is from these pictures. Ah! Hold on, this bag. Did it just... move? Polkunka? <laughs> Oh my god, no. Eh. I'm cold. <laughs> hey. Volkunka. I beg your pardon? Volkunka is a word in Kuraiinese that people use when they're surprised. You just exposed a lie, so this is the power of cross-examination, is it? I should be the one shocked here by your shocking lack of understanding. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. <laughs> Sorry, I got like a, a message from Fleur like... 20 minutes ago or so. And they were like, that pun was so bad, my Wi-Fi just up and left. I don't even know what pun it is, but... <laughs> Oh, God. But, just a moment. In the accused... If the accused was lying, then that just makes him more suspicious than ever. Uh, and this just makes things worse for me than ever. Albi, are you hiding something? Please give only the true statements. I can't help you if I don't... If you don't tell the truth. Marn. I just can't seem to get him to open up to me. <laughs> so accused. You have seen the treasure box with your own eyes after all, haven't you? Well, maybe I did take a peek one time a long time ago when I was cleaning the treasure room. But you weren't in the treasure room at the time of the incident, right? Oh, of course I wasn't. Hmm. That is a lie. You were most definitely inside the treasure room on the day of the incidents. And I have proof. He does? This was found on the floor of the treasure room. It's a scroll entitled Notice, and contains a list of temple monk duties. These instructions pertain to the day of the incident. And what exactly is that supposed to prove? The accused's fingerprints were found on the scroll. What? Oh no! Where is it? It's not here! I must have dropped it somewhere! Indeed, you must have dropped it when you were busy murdering the victim. Mm -hmm. Oh no, 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 no! And that means... Albi was there on the day of the incident. <laughs> so this is the power of cross-examination. And the more the accused talks, the guiltier he paints himself. Yes, it would seem so, your majesty. <laughs> uh, you predicted my argument and had evidence ready to refute it. How was any of that supposed to help the accused? See? I told you you can't trust lawyers and their lies. Benevolence already said the kid's guilty. Just declare him guilty and get it over with. Mm -mm. No, everything is going all wrong. Shadow, what do I do? As I suspected, this cross-examination session has served no purpose whatsoever. Oh, you're wrong. But armed as we are with her benevolence's insight, there is no reason to doubt his guilt. And I guess I'll just have to poke holes in this inside of hers. By the way, this didn't prove to be very interesting at all, Mr. Payne. Nevertheless, I will now finally announce my verdict. Wait just one moment, your majesty. I haven't seen this divination seance for myself yet. As the defense, I have the right to check it. 
Hmm, is that really necessary? I have to get home and apologize to my wife. I guess she really did give him the business. Your Majesty, I enthusiastically support having Mr. Wright see the seance. You do? And why is that, Mr. Payne? Don't you want to see it? See the lawyer being utterly crushed by the power of the seance. Uh... You know, I'm not really sure what to call this. And then watch him tearfully beg for mercy. Well, now. I'm sure it'll make up for not getting to go to that class with your wife. It certainly does sound worth seeing. And it'll give me a juicy tidbit to tell the missus. <laughs> I've been reduced to a juicy tidbit. A country failing at justice. Mm, pretty much. Well, for an interloper, I imagine you do have to see it for yourself to be convinced. It's certainly unprecedented, but let's have the divination seance performed again. But then, right after the tearful begging, I really do have to be going. The only tearful begging is going to come from the prosecution when we're through. Eh, how pitiful the defense looks, still scrambling desperately for a foothold. Blissfully unaware that, it, that, that, that defeat and despair are all that await him. I know, right? I love it so much. And there she is, her benevolence. Your benevolence, Rafa Padma Kurain. Thank you for coming all this way once again. Your gratitude is necessary. This is simply my duty. Barb-headed attorney. Y yes? I am told you question the veracity of the sacred divination seance. It would seem the depths of your reverence and blasphemy are lost on you. I am just a foreigner, ignorant in the ways and customs of this country. I apologize in advance for anything rude I might say or do, Your Benevolence. All I want is a fair trial for Albi. You would imply that the trials of this country are unfair? Do explain, outsider. How verdicts founded on truths imparted by the very souls of the dead lack impartiality. What's fair about trials with no defense and no chance for the accused to tell their story? How dare you speak to Her Benevolence in that manner? Did you hear that? Did you hear how he talked to her benevolence? Does he know about anything, ignorant outsider? He won't stand for it. He must be punished. Yikes, it looks like I really stuck my foot in it this time. Punish him! Punish him! Punish him! Punish him! Silence, one and all! Is she standing up for me? Be not disquieted, my people. He merely expresses his opinion. Oh well, looks like her benevolence is going to be more reasonable than I thought. Attorneys are ghastly creatures, with souls stained black by brazen untruths. The words of a lowly worm such as that are not worth troubling yourselves over. Alright, I take that back. None of his prattling can sway the truth of my insights. Rest assured, he will soon see the error of his foolish ways. How then, your benevolence, and the divination seance, if you would? Certainly. Nena, my robe. Holy Mother, we hold this divination seance in your name. Let the eyes of everyone here be clear, and our ears be unstopped. O oh, dance of devotion, guide the victim's soul to me, so that we may receive their final memories in the pool of souls. I know I can skip this, but...
She said, from the top, make it drop. <laughs> Shakira, Shakira. Nice. Well, what just happened? An image appeared in the pool. A final message from the victim's soul. The last communication of his Mitama. The divination seance has revealed this to us. Benevolence can use her power of spirit communion to project the victim's memories of the last few moments before their demise. So what we saw in the pool is what Mr. Roll actually experienced. In the victim's memories, we see the accused raising a weapon up over his head. This is consistent with the findings of the police investigation. There has to be some kind of mistake. I didn't do it. This looks bad for Albie. Really, really bad. <laughs> now do you see why I'm the incredible pain? More than I can express. funny because he's a pain, ha ha ha. And even if those really are the victim's last memories, what can I do with them? <laughs> there it is. There is the face of a man being utterly crushed. Oh, how long I've waited to see it. Isn't it wonderfully gratifying, your majesty? Oh, yes. Very satisfying indeed. Now, are you finally convinced, traveler? The accused is most assuredly guilty. Am I really the only unbiased one here? Now then, I think we've been amused enough. If you give up now, I won't even invoke the Defense Culpability Act against you. You'll be free to slink back to your own country with your tail between your legs. The Defense Culpability Act? What's that? What? You mean you honestly don't know? I, uh... No? At least the demons aren't here. I guess they stayed back in Japanifornia or something. Must be all the hubbub. Well, not only is he a lying black-hearted lawyer, he's also an imbecile. Your Majesty, I think you'd better explain the Defense Culpability Act to him. Yes, I think I'd better. The Defense Culpability Act, or DC Act for short, is as follows. In the name of her eminence, those who would support criminals will be deemed just as guilty. In other words, if you help the accused by defending him and he is found guilty, you will receive the same sentence as he. The OG demons were nicer. <laughs> For real, though. Um, I think it's kind of safe to say that this country is Corrupt? <laughs> what? What kind of insane law is that? Under the DC Act, many an attorney has been convicted and met with a grim fate. Some went to prison, others received the death penalty. That's why there are so few in our country today who admit to being an attorney. Hmm. That's as it should be. 
The history of our courts proves that. Attorneys are black-souled creatures who will tell any lie to save the accused. Thus, attorneys deserve to be exterminated. Okay, Dalek. Okay. <laughs> I never felt so much hostility coming at me from so many sides. What could have happened to make everyone feel this way? You fell right into my trap, Phoenix Wright. Your win streak against me and my brother ends today. With the seance and the DC Act on my side, I'll finally get my revenge. So that's why he was so eager to have me defend Albi. Chased out and humiliated back home, fate brought me to the foothills of Kurain. I thank my lucky stars that I am chief prosecutor here now. Defense, know that if I rule, that the accused is guilty, you will go to prison too. That explains Albi's reaction earlier. Defend me? Mr. Wright, what are you saying? You can't do that. Your Majesty, isn't the prison sentence a bit lenient? After all, we're talking about treason. Oh, I gotta figure out where I gotta go from here. I think I remember, kind of. One should pay for such a crime with one's life. Hmm, yes, I believe the death penalty might be appropriate under these circumstances. The death penalty? No way. You're kidding, right, Your Majesty? Ha 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 ha. Do I look like I'm kidding? I'll have you put your life and your dark, tainted soul on the line here. Death? This can't be happening. The courts of resignation. Our courts are well known as thus. In this land where my seances prove, provide the truth and no attorneys can intervene, criminals known know that all they can do is resign themselves to their fate. Oh, foreign lawyer, I ask you once more. Are you sure you still want to defend the accused? Mm. There, there's my have to think of in all this too. I can't just lay down my life. What in the world should I do? I want to see what happens if I abandon him. <laughs> A trial I just happened to walk into, and a country I just happened to visit. How can I put my life on the line for something like this? I appreciate what you're trying to do, Mr. Wright, but never mind about me. You just go ahead and go see Miss Maya. But what about Albi? She's kind of like a big sister to me. Isn't this why I became a lawyer in the first place? To help those with no one on their side. I can't just abandon everything I believe in. All I can do now... Stand firm and tight. Well, don't hold your tears back on my account, Phoenix Wright. Admit your defeat and grovel before me, the chief prosecutor for your life. Objection! Even if it means being subject to the Defense Culpability Act. I will defend Albi. What? Mom is a right. The defendant insists he's he, the defendant insists he's innocent. Not even a divine div, divine divination seance should be accepted without examination. Oh, Kunka! But if I'm found guilty, you will get the death penalty too. Even knowing that, you still want to defend me? I don't know what happened in the past. 
And it looks like everyone in this country considers lawyers to be liars. So I can understand if you don't believe me. But, I still believe in you and your innocence. So all I have to do is keep believing and find the truth. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Barb-headed attorney, you continue to amuse me. Though your barb jabs are nothing to be more... are proving to be more... Me, more than mere jokes. Your benevolence. Believe me when I say that this attorney will knock your insights out. Insolent, disrespectful attorney. You'll have plenty of time to regret your folly in the Twilight Realm. Not a wise move, Traveler. Not wise at all. You should have taken the chance I offered to save your life. But you have made your choice. The Defense Culpability Act will be applied in this case. And with this verdict, you'll, so you'll both soon be parting with your heads. The souls of the departed speak only the truth, and I but give their messages a voice. If you think my insights contain falsehood, I challenge you to prove it. Okay. The accused swung whatever what he was holding down on the victim's head. With the pain, the victim's vision went dark. This is when he lost his life. Still, I can't believe it. A murder after the morning dance of devotion. These are the victim's experiences just before his death. It's the victim's final memories. We can assume they aren't lies. So how do I break this down? Allow me to relieve you of your ignorance defense. Did you notice the world's... Words that appeared in the seance vision. Come to think of it, I did see words like song of ceremony and incense. The victim's final memories are not limited to sight alone. Sight, smell, taste, sound, touch. All is laid bare in the pool of souls. So one Mr. Roll experience with his five senses appears in the vision as words. Right? Precisely. And by examining these sensations, we can perceive the victim's final moments with unparalleled clarity. Works for me. I can use all the extra information I can get. Now to find a contradiction between her insights and the seance vision. Your benevolence, I ask that you please show me the seance vision again. Very well. Mm -mm. Wait a minute. Her benevolence said after the morning dance of her devotion earlier, didn't she? Well, hold on, wait. Let me look at this. And time of death. April 23rd. 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. It doesn't say when they're sung, right? Due to the growing number of thefts around the temple, we will tightening security throughout, throughout. Therefore, all of the hallway shutters will re remain shut for today's dance of devotion. Okay. Rayfi's 14. Damn. Isn't there something off about that? I use these arrows to select the inside I think is off. Yes. This is the insight that sounded funny. I'll just carefully compare this insight with the seance vision. 
I notice a sensation that seems contradictory. I'll tap select. This is it. This is the part of the vision that contradicts the insight. I just select the sensation I think is inconsistent and then press percent. Wait just a moment. Yes? What is it, Barbed Head? You're saying the incident occurred after the morning dance of devotion, right? That's right. What of it? And isn't it strange that Mr. Roll could still hear the song of ceremony? Oh my, you're absolutely right. Huh. Is that all that troubles you? Huh? What the victim heard was just a practice run of the Song of Ceremony. Practice run? What are you talking about? Mr. Payne, if you would? Certainly. Allow me to explain. The incident occurred in the inter interval between the morning and afternoon dances. During that time, the singers were practicing in the performance hall. Precisely. I was there as well, so I can corroborate this statement. I see. So what the victim heard was that practice session. Ah, uh, there goes my contradiction. Okay, so they were practicing in this performance hall. That must be the room where Albie and I saw her benevolence dancing. However, Mr. Payne, I admit one detail bothers troubles me. Ask away, your majesty. It's a big temple. The performance hall and treasure room are quite far from each other. Could the song really be heard all the way in the treasure room? He's right. It is a very big temple. Well, how about it, Mr. Payne? Your Majesty, have you forgotten? There are speakers in every room of Temple Temple, including the treasure room. Oh, that's right. Speakers? For what purpose? Are you serious, Mr. Wright? They're to broadcast the sacred music of the performance hall throughout the temple. That's why the victim could hear the song of ceremony in the seance vision. It was the practice run going on in the performance hall, heard over the speakers. Thank you for your explanation, your benevolence. That makes perfect sense, even to a feeble-minded old man like me. Think nothing of it. Now, if you wouldn't mind, could you please alter your insights for us? Very well. The song of ceremony the victim heard was a practice run through the temple speakers. I think I'm getting the hang of this. If I point out an, if I point out an inconsistency, she'll update her insights accordingly. So if I keep pointing things out, maybe I can knock all of her insights out after all. I better find another inconsistency, no matter how small. Hmm, it's a bit hard to focus on the insights with the seance vision going. I'll try using the pause button temporarily to stop the vision. There, I pause the vision. I think I can touch the flashing panels. To jump to different parts of the vision. Oh, okay, cool. I'll try moving the Mitama mark to the flashing red panel. There. Ooh. Okay. Now that I know how to get around in seance visions, it's time to find inconsistencies between the insights and the vision. Uh. <laughs> yeah, actually. Okay, so he smells incense. He hears the song of ceremony. And then he hears voice voice. And then pain. <laughs> hmm. Damn. Through the temple speakers. Oh, 
uh, on the second statement. Go to the fifth panel. Oh, interesting. So, with the pain, the victim's vision went dark. <laughs> Indeed. Hello. Oh my god. The pain comes afterwards, right? Objection! You're saying the victim's field of vision went dark right after he was struck, correct? Of course, as anyone with eyes can see. Well, pardon me, but I must disagree. What? Your benevolence, please take another look at the exact moment the victim felt pain. Huh? Oh! Everything goes black and then only after that. The victim feels pain. Inconceivable! This places the order of events at odds with what you say happened. My word! Oh. <clears throat> Of course I am! I mean, it, 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 it matches better with the environment. It just looks better. Oh god, I'm struggling with getting into the the the, the, the Kurainese judge's voice. Kunka, your benevolence, what is the meaning of this? Hi, you're not being wrong. My insights are beyond fallacy. If what the defense says is true, this is a very grave matter indeed. Please forgive me, your benevolence, but I am afraid this contradiction is something we simply can't ignore. <laughs> now, now, let's not be too hasty, your majesty. I think I can clear this up. Uh, true, true. You have something to add, Mr. Payne? A thousand apologies. It seems the prosecution has failed to make one tiny thing clear. And that will be... On the day of the incident, there was a power outage, a blackout in the- in one part of the temple. Of course there fucking was. And as I recall, the crime scene was in that sector. The power outage must be why the victim's field of vision went dark. Sir, you realize that by saying this, that contradicts what we already know, right? <laughs> Dumbass. I apologize for the neglecting- for neglecting to tell the court this detail. I'm afraid it slipped my mind. It doesn't have our updated blackout report. <laughs> Rather, you knew all along and are only letting it slip now that it's convenient, Payne. The power outage knocked out both the lights and, and the speakers. Oh, there was a blackout there, was there? Well, now, that explains everything, does it not? What do you mean, your benevolence? Please share your thoughts with us, if you would. The blackout occurred when the accused and the victim were faced with one another. Fearing the victim would flee under the cover of darkness, the accused swiftly brought his weapon down on the victim's head. I see. That makes perfect sense, your benevolence. Well, the victim was struck after the lights went out. The depth of your insight is awe-inspiring, your benevolence. Give her a hand, everyone. Well done. Long may you live and prosper. Hey, I want to live long and prosper too. Enough applause. You flatter me. Now, your benevolence, in light of this new information. Yes, of course. I will alter my insights. All right. Gotcha now. The song of ceremony the victim heard was a praise run to the temple speakers. So much for my inconsistency. At least I was able to draw out some new info. And with new info comes a chance to find new inconsistencies. I have to compare the insights with the vision again and see what else I can dig up.
Objection! Dumb. <laughs> Finally found it. This is the gaping hole I've been looking for. Your benevolence, as impressive as your spirit communion power is, it's not infallible. You never know when to stop talking, do you? I hope you realize your words are an insult to all adherents of Kurianism. Defense, watch what you say. If you don't mind that tongue of yours, you won't have one left to mind. It's certainly not my intention to insult spirit mediums. But maybe I'm not the only one who needs to learn when to stop talking. What malarkey? I believe you said a, f said a few moments ago that the victim could hear the song of ceremony thanks to the temple speakers. But then, how do you explain how the victim could still hear the song of ceremony even after the power went out? Oh! This contradiction of fact can only mean the song of ceremony Mr. Roll heard was not coming from the speakers. What? Impossible! What are you saying? That the song you heard was coming directly from the performance hall? That's exactly what I'm saying. It's the only possible explanation. But the scene of the crime was nowhere near the performance hall. Right. The song couldn't make it all the way to the treasure room. Not unless... You mean to say... Yes, the treasure room was not the actual scene of the crime. It must have been somewhere else. Somewhere closer to the performance hall. You can't be serious. There is a glaring contradiction in the claims of her benevolence and the prosecution. Therefore, the defense insists that this case be thoroughly re-examined. What? No! This is completely unprecedented. An inconsistency in her benevolence insights. Unbelievable. Heed not his forked tongue, your ma majesty. These are but the claims of a corrupt lawyer. A feeble ruse from a feeble mind. But... But the contradiction revealed by the defense is undeniable. I can't... We can't... We can't just turn a blind eye to it. But the defense's assertion is, in the end, meaningless. Even if the location of the murder turned out to be different, it doesn't change what we've seen of the moment of the murder. I indeed, the accused is standing right there in front of the victim. Furthermore, the murder weapon remains raised above his head. My insight still stands. I had to admit it, but she's right. The seance vision still makes the situation look really grim for Albie. <laughs> I doubt even the defense can dream up an explanation as to why. The accused had his hands up over his head. Well, this defense dares to dream of making it out of this nightmare alive. You what? You still insist on trying to tear down my insights, do you? You'd better be prepared to back up your claim. Remember what will happen to that tongue of yours if we find you are just wagging it. But first, think later, pretty much. Of course I can back up my claim, just as soon as I think of something. You appear to be fully prepared, Defense. As the embodiment of this court, I give you permission to try and prove your claim, as long as you're willing to stake your life on it. I concur, Your Majesty. Prepare the tongue shears. Chop, chop. Chop, chop. Yes, let's have the bailiff fetch them. I think I saw a suitable pair in the basement. Chop, chop. Stop, stop. <laughs> uh, uh, I hear that lying, lying lawyers have several tongues to spare. I'm sure he won't miss one. Yikes, these people are actually serious. I'm rather attached to my tongue. Think, Phoenix, think. Other than to raise a weapon, why would Albi have held his hands up like that? Aha! So that's why! 
and the reason the defendant had his hands up over his head. Let me explain by something in the crime photo. What explains why Albi had his ha hands raised above his head? Gun. As in the seance vision. I witnessed the defendant raise both of his hands over his head yet yesterday. You did? Where did you see such a thing? When the police had their guns trained on him as they made their arrests. Oh, are you saying? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what if he just did a dance? Like, <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Alvi is like nine, right? So, like, it, I think it's like completely possible that he was just like doing annoying TikTok dances in front of patrol. <laughs> We're shaking it like a Polaroid picture. You're saying the victim was a security guard and an armed one at that. The defense proposes that the victim had poised his firearm at Albi, and that's why the defendant's hands were raised in the air. Polkunka! Oh my fucking god, you fucking did. I would have thought the seance vision could be interpreted that way. This is not possible. It's... It can't be... Not bad for a total knockout. How dare that lawyer devil go against her benevolence. He's no better than that traitorous snake, Dirk. Traitorous snake? Dirk? Who is that? No, I can't believe it. A contradiction in one of my insights? There has to be some kind of mistake. I... I won't accept it. That's right, your benevolence, and I won't accept it either. It goes against all we hold sacred. Throw him in jail immediately for... Lee's majesty. What? Yeah, you said it. Throw him in jail. Yes, make him pay for the way he disrespected her benevolence. Ugh, these people are definitely not my fans right now. You think? That's right, exterminate him! I love Doctor Who. Peace, give me peace! I said peace! Now everyone, please calm down. Hmm? I see. Your Majesty, please assign this black-hearted attorney a suitable punishment. The audience became the Daleks. For real, though. <laughs> no, I can't charge him with Lee's majesty. What? What? But why not, your majesty? He was simply following the proper procedure for defending the accused. There's nothing unlawful about that. Sonic pointer finger. <laughs> But, your majesty, don't you want to wrap this trial up quickly? Why not just give your verdict, and then you can go home and make it up to your wife? We can't end the trial now, not when we just learn new information about the case. Get wrecked. Your majesty, not you too. You would honestly entertain the idea that my insights contain a contradiction? Truly, it is shocking. In the 20 plus years since the DC Act went into effect, such a thing has never occurred. To be honest, I didn't want to believe it, either. But with his life on the line, the defense pointed out an inconsistency. Oh, we are Judge Go, and it is our duty to scrutinize it to the satisfaction of the law. You don't go against the royal priestess, you non-believer! No, my faith is as strong as ever. I have a duty to make a fair ruling in this trial. If you insist on interfering with that pros pro process, your benevolence, I'm afraid I must request your removal from this courtroom, a royal priestess or not. What? I'll have you know, your benevolence. Please acquiesce in this, your benevolence. <laughs> <laughs> Looks could kill. I won't forget this offense, barbed head. I do not admit defeat. 
I won't. Bailiff, please see her benevolence out. Your Mitama will face due retribution in the Twilight Realm. The demons there will... They'll pluck the barbs right off your stupid head. Like Apollo tried to do in, in that one case in that last game. <laughs> I hope your suffering will be super duper painful. And, and, I hope they throw you into a lake of burning fire. Yeah, and then, and then... I guess she's still just a teenager after all. Now then, defense. Mr. Light, was it? That's right, your majesty. Phoenix Wright. Of course, Mr. Wright. My apologies. Well, now that we have this newly uncovered fact, I suggest we proceed with arguments. Thank you, your majesty. Yes, yes, but do not misunderstand me. This doesn't mean I trust you completely. I'll be keeping a close eye on you, so don't even think about lying to this court. I understand, your majesty. Oh, maybe now we can finally run a heel trial. A heel? Where did I get that age from? Real trial! <laughs> Arguments, your majesty. Very well, I accept your challenge. Huh? What's with him? <laughs> oh, the look on your face, Mr. Wright. It's just... <laughs> it's just too hilarious. What's so funny, Mr. Payne? The defense still doesn't get it. And the truth, he unearthed is going to bury him in his case instead. What do you mean by that, prosecutor? I told you, it's chief prosecutor. Yes, because that's the point to focus on right now. The defense is digging its own grave. Consider this, your majesty. Why would the victim, a security guard, point a gun at the accused? Oh. Oh, indeed. Because the accused was about to commit a theft. Ah. Like, I, I hardly even know Norwegian history. So. <laughs> and I live in Norway. So, oops. Oh, okay. It is the only logical explanation. What? That does sound pretty logical, actually. It doesn't help the accused situation at, at all. Mm. I see, I see. If anything, it makes him look even more guilty. Yes, I have to agree. Now let me spell out this truth the defense didn't bother to think through. Mr. Rowe came across the accused just as he was trying to steal the treasure. The guard pointed his gun at the accused and just when the power went out. And the accused murdered the victim and hid his body in the treasure room. <laughs> Hand truck for moving heavy treasure around is stored in the treasure room. The accused could have easily moved the body with that. And after all that hard work to knock down those insights... Ah, back into the old familiar corner once more. Mr. Wright, do you have a rebuttal? Uh, I'm drawing a total blank here. <laughs> I hope you're ready to climb that scaffold. I... Uh... Ask you a question, Defense. I've got nothing. I can't think of any grounds for an objection. The only thing to do at this point is ask the defendant himself what happened. But I don't know if Albie will cooperate with me or not. Albie? Will you tell us what really happened? You don't have to say anything, accused. Fall for his evil trap and you'll only dirty your own soul. Albie, you have to tell me the truth. I can't help you unless you do. Mm. Mm. Mr. Wright, I'm sorry. Why? Why won't you trust me? Is this it? Is this the end? For both of us? Shut your whore mouth, okay. Maya, I'm sorry. I, 
I never met a real lawyer before. Everybody always told me they're bad, bad people who help dirty criminals go free. I never thought a lawyer would actually try to help me, would actually believe in me, would risk his own life for me. I never would have even imagined it. I'll be. So that's why I lied, to try and save myself. But I'm not going to lie anymore. If you believe in me enough to put your own life on the line, then I'm going to believe in you too. Yes, Albi, I love you so much. Sweet child. Get wrecked, pain. Allow me. Allow me to explain. Now we're talking. Time to finally get to the bottom of things. Phoenix has fucking defended an orca. <laughs> to be honest, I went into the treasure room lots of times to look at the treasure box. Even though the temple told you you weren't allowed to go anywhere near it. Yes, I'm sorry. Mr. Roll even saw me once and scolded me. But that box is so beautiful. The way it glows in the dark, I couldn't help myself. Wait, it glows in the dark? That's right, it's covered in this special mineral called chloronite that makes it glow. Well, yeah. You're right. It's absolutely breathtaking. It's really a shame they don't put it on display for the public. Can you imagine how many people would go on night tours of the temple if they did? If only applied such passion to telling me the truth earlier. He really will. On the day of the incident, I was on my way to the treasure room again. And I ran into Mr. Roll on the great stairs. So those were not the treasure room stairs in the seance vision. No, they were the great stairs that connected the hallway. Makes sense. The vision wasn't clear enough to show us what was at the top of the stairs. All of a sudden, Mr. Roll drew his gun and threatened me with it. I quickly put my hands up. Mr. Roll, he acted so scary. For some reason, he had his scarf over his mouth. I couldn't read his expression at all. <laughs> God, the fucking names in this are just atrocious, really. Just then, the power went out. So I took that chance to hightail it out of there. I ran for my life. Even now, when I try to think back on it. All I can remember are the gun and the piercing look in Mr. Roll's eyes. It must have been when I dropped the notice scroll. Which means someone else brought it to the treasure room along with Mr. Roll's body. I was so confused the first time I played this game, I was like... What is, what is his name supposed to be a pun on? I was like thinking alibi at first and then I realized no. It's I'll be your guide. Oh, God. Did Mr. Roll say anything to you when you ran into him on the stairs? Mm. What is it, Albie? I have no idea why, but he asked me a strange question. Did you steal it? He said. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I didn't say all this before. I didn't think anybody would believe me. <laughs> a grand speech. One that confirmed my suspicions that... You were the thief. Objection. But that might have been... Have just been the victim's misunderstanding. Where, where there's smoke, there's fire, as they say. The victim must have had a good reason to be suspicious of the accused. 
Why does every new piece of information have to seem so incriminating? Mm -hmm. Shadow, what do I do? Shadow. And what better reason to suspect the boy than seeing the treasure box in his hands? In the course of his rounds, the victim must have noticed that the treasure had been stolen. And then, just after that... He ran into the accused. I'll be your guide. Mm, no, that's not what happened. Therefore, the one who stole the treasure and killed the victim can be none other, none other than the accused. Mm. Puppy. I just noticed he's standing on the box. He's so short. What now? Oh my god. Look at the puppy. I'm gonna cry. Hey, Shadow! Town boy! Well, what do we have here? I'm sorry about this. This is my dog, Shadow. You nearly gave me a heart attack. So that's what was making his back move. Can't you quiet that yappy mutt down? Shadow says that Mr. Roll made a mistake. You can understand him? <laughs> Don't tell me this surprise witness. This this is a surprise witness for the defense. I beg your pardon? You're not thinking of cross-examining an animal, are you? I've been there, done that, your... What was the... Your majesty? That's it. <laughs> of course not, your majesty. Not this time, anyway, exactly. Been there, done that, twice. Oh, well, I'm glad to hear that. I thought I'd have to reassess my ass assessment of your sanity for a second there. I think I'd better reassess my strategy, and fast. I have to somehow show that somebody else could have struck the victim, or were sunk. While it's true that the defendant was standing in front of the victim when he died, it doesn't mean somebody else couldn't have struck the victim at that time. If you're going to go that far... And I hope this means you have another angle to, of approach ready. Exactly. I mean, who but the accused standing front and center could have done it? Unless you can back up your claim. It's nothing more than conjecture. Okay, come on, Phoenix. I know I can think of something convincing. Where else could the victim have been struck from? Uh, the, 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 the back? Take that! With the defendant standing in front of the victim. Isn't it possible that the victim could have been struck from behind? From behind, you say? Hmm, I see. Yes, I suppose it's not outside the realm of possibility. Good, now at least I have some breathing room. But who do you suppose it could have been? Oh, uh, the true culprit, naturally. The one who actually committed the theft and murder. The true culprit, and I suppose you have a true timeline of events to go along with that. I should have known I'd have to explain everything. Alright, if we assume the true culprit struck the victim from behind, then that means... After going to the treasure room and stealing the treasure, the true culprit tried to escape. But then Mr. Roll appeared, making his rounds. I imagine the culprit then quickly hid in the storeroom at the other end of the hallway. <laughs> You're grasping at straws, Mr. Wright. Admit it, you have nothing but baseless conjecture. I'm going to look for something to base it on right now. Albi? When you ran into Mr. Roll in the hallway, was there anything or anyone around the storeroom area? I don't know. There might have been somebody there, but... I couldn't see. It was only halfway down the stairs, so I couldn't see the ends of that hallway. I see. Swing and a miss. Oh, Shadow says that someone was there. I, I see. Thank you for that. Too bad his testimony is inadmissible. <laughs> you think this is a joke? 
Maybe the defendant didn't happen to see this other person. But that doesn't mean the true culprit couldn't have been there in the hallway. Objection. Your desperate floundering is getting hard to watch. But I will enjoy watching you sink. What are you talking about? Unfortunately for you, only the accused and the victim were there in that hallway at the time of the incident. How can you continue to make that assertion? Because there was a witness. A very reliable live witness. What? Your Majesty, the prosecution would like to call its witness to the stand. Calling an eyewitness to the stand, hmm? It's been decades since that's happened. And unlike the defense's witness, you can rest assured that there are no pets involved. That was a low blow. Very well, I'll allow it. And now, for something we've not heard in quite some time. Bring the witness to the stand. There he is. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Okay, so this, this fucking name, this, this is what fucking broke me when I first played this game. Huh. <sighs> I was like, peace lubin, peace lubin understanding. I was like, what the fuck is his name? And then I was like, oh my god, no, I get it. Fucking peace, love, and understanding. I. F <clears throat> I usually just call him Hippie Jesus. Oh, if it is an instructor understanding. You're the eyewitness? Instructor? Not only is Mr. Understanding Temple Temple's head monk, but he's also a renowned Demol Demolin expert. D d d yes. Sorry to have to ask, but what's a Demolin? Peace, love, and understanding. Yes, his name is Peace, love, and understanding. Peace, love, and understanding. You see, this this is like why I think uh, peace, love, and understanding is the name. I'm like Temple Temple's head monk. Can you dig? I think I forgot to say his 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 his, his line. I was just was so put off by his name. But you see, like, how am I supposed to like? pronounce that. Do I pronounce that as like peace, love, and understanding? Do I peace, love, and understanding? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Check it. Here she is, my sweet serenader. My one and only. Groovy. Groovy, right? Hold on. Uh... You heard our sultry sounds once before, brother. Oh, it's a dance of devotion. That's a song from the dance of devotion. Right on, brother. A song of ceremony. Playing this tune together is a precious gig for me and my girl here, you dig? The song of ceremony. The song that was playing at the time of the murder. Oh, holy mother. May the righteous sound of my demolin serve as my offering to you. Wonderful. A great performance, as always. This is my thing, you know. My bag. I make instruments speak, baby.
By the by, Majesty Pops. No Jamalin's class no Jamalin class today? No, I'm afraid this trial has gone into overtime, thanks to the lawyer over there. And the class the judge wanted to attend was it was a Demolin lesson. Well, you know what they say, baby. Never trust the lawyer, man. Our transgressors against the Holy Mother have have to be brought to justice. Thank you for your cooperation, Mr. Anders Mr. Understanden. As the treasure's keeper, you must have been shocked to learn it had been stolen. Yeah, man. That was not cool. Keeping the treasure safe is one of your duties, Mr. Understanden. That's right, brother. This here is the one and only treasure box key. And I keep it on me at all times, can you dig? Well, the sneaky thief went and cracked open that sucker anyway. Total bummer, man. So that's the key to the treasure box, is it? You know it, baby. It's called the Magatama key. And it's a historical artifact to boots. And it's been passed down from head monk to head monk at Temple Temple. The Magatama key, huh? Now someone's jacked the treasure, on my watch. It's a real buzzkill, man. How am I ever gonna face her holiness again? Oh, holy mother, please find it in your in infinite mercy to forgive me. Please guide this lost and humble lamb. Why do I always get the far out ones? Mr. Understanding, you witnessed the accused and the victim heading to the treasure room. You know it, baby. Best believe I scoped that tiny transgressor. Would you please give the court your testimony regarding what you saw? Bring justice against the transgressor, man. Yes, of course. I'll do all I can. In the name of Her Holiness, I vow to sing. Not but the truth. I swear to bring. Him me. Oh, no. Here we can go. <clears throat> okay, so after the morning dance and devotion, to go back to my chamber, I got the notion. Oh my god. I'm become a total hippie. Oh god. So don't you know my tre my chamber's on the way to the temple's treasure room. Hey hey. Any small footsteps I can quite clearly hear if anyone to the treasure room goes near. I hate that he sings it. Was the only one. Oh yeah, fucking hit it. I'll be was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> that high note though. Before the blackout, one other than roll, only I'll be to the treasure room did stroll. Huh. <sighs> Sacrifices accents in the name of her holiness. I can say this is not clavier. <laughs> Tell me I was hallucinating just now. I feel you, Phoenix. I feel you. Like, can you believe Mr. Roll bit the big one after that? Harsh, man. I share your sentiments. You were the one who discovered the victim's body, weren't you, Mr. Randestanden? And that doesn't make him suspicious how? <laughs> what? You found the body as well. He really is a key witness, then. That's right, brother. After the blackout, I went to reset the breaker and give power back to the people. The circuit box is near my chamber, so I'm always the man for the job, you feel me? 
The breakers are on the first floor hallway, in front of the storeroom. On the way, I got a whiff of something funky. Blood, man. Really harsh my mellow. I knew I something wasn't kosher, so I swung by the treasure room to see what's what. And he did say harsh my mellow, but like, it's marshmallow, right? I was like, whoa, man, that was poor Mr. Roll, dead as a doornail. In the interval between the end of the Dance of Devotion and the Blackout. The only ones who went to the scene of the crime were the victim and the accused. So you see, Mr. Understanding's unassailable account is what led to the accused's arrests. Hold it! Isn't it possible that the murder took place before the end of the Dance of Devotion? Eh, eh, eh. I'm afraid that's not possible. The victim was in the performance hall until the very end of the dance. He was? Would you like some proof? How's this? A photo taken by a tourist of the morning Dance of Devotion. My, what a what graceful dancing. I can almost hear the sound of Mr. Understandings the Mullen now. He's right, there is Mr. Roll on duty. <laughs> Never underestimate the incredible pain. Mm -hmm. So in addition to Rafa's insights, he had backup evidence lined up too, huh? As head monk, my monks in training are like my own kids, like family. Can you dig it? I should have thought I'll be better, man. Oh god. Before Her Holiness the Holy Mother, oh, I'll be confess your sins, my young brother. Hey, monk, understanding. You didn't kill Mr. Roll. So I don't have anything to confess confess to the Holy Mother. What? Bogus, little man. Your faith is weak like a wet paper bag. Are you feeling me? Her Holiness is magnanimous, son. If you confess your guilt, she'll forgive you in the Twilight Realm. I don't suppose she could forgive him in this realm first. Defense, please begin your cross-examination. Alright, what I saw, baby. Okay, after the morning dance devotion, I to go back to my chamber, I got the notion. Don't you know, my chamber's on the way through the temp temple's treasure room, hey hey. Any small footsteps I can quite clearly hear, if anyone to the treasure room goes near. Holly was the only one. Before the blackout, one other than uh, roll, only Albi to the treasure room did stroll. Oh god. No, that's not what I meant to do! You be so sure that nobody else was there. Oh man, you lawyers are as uptight as they say. Do you mean like a band? Isn't it possible that someone else could have snuck past? Answer, my friend. A squeaky wooden floorboards, baby. They make such a racket. Not even the quietest cat could sneak by me. You dig? Yes, that makes sense. And of all, and all of that just now was simply more of the of the attorney's unfounded suspicions. I see. Oh God. It's the truth, baby. It's all I sing. The truth is all. It's everything. Oh no. Oh my god. Words of wisdom, words of truth. Uh, baby tooth for sooth, phone booth. Oh yeah. Oh 
What is the band name? Much thanks to Mr. Understanding. Uh, let's bring an end to the fence grandstanding. You're not stopping me. Yo, Phoenix spitting bars right now. You're not stopping me until my client goes free. Yo, let's fucking go. Wait a minute. Why am I singing? I know, even the lawyer is joining in, baby. Everybody's starting to feel the groovy vibe of my far out rhythm. I refuse to let him run his sh this show. Hmm, I didn't notice any inconsistencies, whatever. I know where I have to do now. Go to the fourth one. There we go, I press. I'll be with the only one. How could you tell it was Albi just from the sound of some footsteps? Albi is practically family, man. The smooth groove of his shoes are easy to pick out. To be fair, I can... Uh, I can pick up my mom's fo footsteps too, so it's like... I can hear when she is near. It's, it's kind of weird, actually, how you can, like... Find out who people are from their footsteps. Because my mom lives in this, like, um, apartment block, I guess you could say. I don't actually know what to call it, but she lives in this apartment on, like, the th third floor. So I've gotten so used to, like, hearing her, like, footsteps up the stairs. So I know exactly when it's her. It's like, oh, so someone's someone's in the in the stairwell. It's just like, oh, it's, not my, it's not my mom. <laughs> It's kind of funny. Uh, but how do you know he went to the treasure room? Didn't you think it was possible he went to the storeroom at the other end of the, ho end of the hall? Wait, man. I saw him with my own two eyes. You saw him? Oh, God. In the treasure room. Uh -huh. My pee? <laughs> In the treasure room, this you can't believe. My pee. <laughs> my peepers peep the sneaky sneak. I'll be. Oh my god. No. Tell us. Ooh. Tell us where. Where it is you stood when you saw the accused, if you would. When I heard the footsteps, I looked out the window. From my window, I can see the window of the first floor hallway across the courtyard, you dig? And through that window, I saw Albi walking into the treasure room. Should I have him add the statement to his testimony? Yes, add it, add it, add it. I think I know what to do now. Could you please add that statement to your testimony, Mr. Anastanian? You got it, brother. Through the window, I did spy little Albi with my own eye. Sure you did. Sure you did. All the hallway shutters will remain shut. Sure, sure you, sure you will. Objection! There's something off about that, Mr. Understanding. The music is off? I'm sorry you feel that way, man. Maybe this vibe ain't top in the charts where you're from. What's your poison? Orchestra? Jazz soul? Do you like jazz? <laughs> There's nothing wrong with my ears, witness, but something's not quite right with your eyes. Mr. Understanding, you have been lying to this court. Uh. Why would I lie? I got nothing to hide. Are you sure about that? Truth and truth alone is all I sing. Lying, y'all? Not lying at my thing. I contend otherwise. Do you recognize this object, Mr. Understanding? It's a temple notice, man. What of it? In this notice, the following instruction to the temple monks is written. 
All of the hallway shutters will remain shut for today's dance of devotion. What you talking about, Phoenix? I'm talking about the fact that you're from your chamber. You couldn't have seen anyone going into the treasure room through those shutters. Looks like you didn't get the memo. Hey, I don't believe it, man. If you don't believe it, why don't you read the notice for yourself? Um... Let's see... Something something... Well, something for something something... Is that your idea of reading? I'm not so hot at reading, could I niece, man? I usually get one of the other monks to read stuff for me, you know? Doesn't that make your duties as head monk a little difficult? He's illiterate, fam. He's illiterate. Hey, cut me some slack, man. I only moved to this country six months ago. That's quite recent, isn't it? So, how did someone who's only been here six months become head monk of a temple? How little you understand. Religious faith can't be measured in months or years. I've only been an adherent of Kurainism for three months myself. The Holy Mother's teachings really spoke to me, prompting me to stay in this country. What in the cultish bullshit is this? <laughs> or was it the fact that there are no lawyers here that spoke to you, hmm? Mr. Payne, I know just how you feel, my man. Her holiness's teaching spoke to me too. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Brother Dumb and Brother Dumber. Well, I know why Payne suddenly became a believer in Kurainism, but could understand and have had an ulterior motive for becoming a believer too. Mr. Understanding, were you really in your chamber as you claim? What? Hey, be chill, brother. Weren't you instead somewhere else? Oh, hell yeah. Objection. Mr. Wright, what kind of nonsense are you spouting now? According to Mr. Understanding's testimony, he saw Albie with his own eyes. Therefore, is it really nonsense to suggest he could have seen Albi from somewhere else? Oh, well... You have a theory defense. Do you know where Mr. Understanding was, if not in his chamber? If he wasn't in his room, then... If Albi had gone down the hallway towards this treasure room, there are only a few places it could have seen Albi from. I do have a theory, Your Majesty. Let's say the witness really did see Albi going towards the treasure room. What then? The defense proposes that this is the only place he could have seen... Could have been to see Albi go down that hall. I mean, it has to be here, right? In the hallway. There. Uh, you just suggested earlier that that's where the true culprit might have been. True, but no matter how I look at it, this is the only place understanding could have been. Mr. Foreign Lawyer. Don't tell me. Are you accusing Mr. Understanding of being the true culprit in this case, accused? Yes, Your Majesty. I contend there's a strong possibility this witness is the murderer. Dare you be so disrespectful? First you criticize her benevolence's insights. Now you accuse the head monk of murder. Objection. This is the only place the witness could have been. <laughs> if he was here, he would have struck the victim down from behind. He could have, sorry. And moved his body to the treasure room. That's nothing but groundless conjecture. And there's one more thing. Do you remember what was said in the opening argument? The opening argument. During that argument, it was suggested that Albi used his position as monk in training to get his hands on the treasure. That's right, and what of it? Well, why don't we try this twist on for size? The thief used his position as, as head monk of the temple to get a hold of the treasure. What? What? Are you joshing me, man? The key to the treasure box has been passed down from head monk to head monk. What better position to be in if you want to steal the treasure? He 
You can't possibly be serious. Does this mean you're claiming that Mr. Understanding's oath of faith is nothing but a lie designed to get him closer to the treasure? The witness hasn't been truthful in, in his testimony to this court. So clearly, he isn't above lying. Mm -hmm. And you swear to the Holy Mother that naught but the truth would you bring. In light of that, I don't... I don't think it's unfair to call your faith into question. <sighs> this is ridiculous. Are there no limits to what this lawyer will say? I mean, a lie is such a strong word. Maybe it was just a mistake. With a nervous wreck routine, prosecutor. You're just embarrassing yourself, man. What? What was that, Mr. Understanding? Lawyer, man, you really are the lowest of the low. You gone and said something I can't forgive. Oh, God. You call my belief into question, my faith in the Holy Mother. Nobody, nobody gets away with that. Oh boy, here we go again. Oh my god! Oh fuck. What on earth? <laughs> oh god, I remember. I burst out laughing the first time I witnessed this part. It was so funny. It was so funny. It was like uh, the same way I burst out laughing for um what's his name? Marlon Rhymes's transformation. It was like the same as that. But the fact is that this never left my mind. Marlon Rhymes obviously did. This man is high over his tits. Exactly, which is why I call him Hippie Jesus because you know, hey man. But I guess Stoner Jesus also works, so Either way, what on earth? That music is making my ears bleed. It is the music of my soul. <laughs> Death to the lawyer. <laughs> Damn. Okay, so he plugged in his Damala, right? So obviously it's like supposed to function as like an amp, but like where are the drums coming from? <laughs> I'm the Twilight Messenger, can't you tell? Gonna take this lying lawyer straight to hell. Dripping with lies, running with Philistines? I'm gonna send that lawyer to the guillotines. Good for you, my man. And now for something completely different. Oh, no shit. Plinkety plunk music would, would just wouldn't let me express my rage. Your rage, huh? Isn't the real source of your anger having your lie exposed? You just don't get it. If I lied, it's cause you drove me to it. All sniffing around and suspicious and throwing out accusations. Sorry, but as a lawyer, I'm afraid that's my job. Yeah, well, lawyers are crap. Keep making noise and I'll have to use my partner here on you. I'm the one making noise. Hey, so you want to know the truth, huh? You can handle the truth, do you? Fine. 
and see you try. Feel the heat of my brutal death beat. Savage, right? Sweating bullets, ain't ya? <sighs> Sorry, I'm gonna yawn a bit. <laughs> The screams of my soul are gonna make a mosh pit out of this peanut gallery. Did he really just win the court over with that performance? Yo, geezer, I got something to testify. You ready for the howling of my soul? I call this chart topper soul screaming truth. The priestess's dance had come to an end. To the music storeroom my way I did wend. Death, truth is what you dread. Hear me shred. From my spot in front of the storeroom, I saw Albi creep through the treasure room. And trailing from behind, hound on the scent, I saw a patrol. After Albi, he went. Me and my girl here, innocent and sweet, back by the story. Storm can't be beat. And now went the power, ticket to midnight. Blacker than black is black, robbing all sight. I'm letting him do the singing himself. <laughs> I wanted to try to learn this part, actually. <laughs> but I was like... Fuck. <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> yeah, baby. Let that soul metal flow! <clears throat> what is that music? Never heard anything like it. And it's so fast, it's making my head spin. This is the Marlin Metal! Yeah! Hey, yo, geezer, how are those ears ringing? I don't know much about music. I've got chills, and they're multiplying. And I'm losing control! Cause the power you're supplying, it's electrifying! <laughs> You scared lawyer man? Run away. Run away as fast as you can. What a wonderful rhythm. The perfect accompan accompaniment for further deliberations. Now, Mr. Understanding, what did you go to the music storm for? Hey, I went to put my Damalin away. She's my precious partner. Gotta give her a good rest after playing in the rites. But then why did you lie before? Because you'd send me to hell! Am I like peeking my mic a lot? I feel like I am. I know I'm peeking this mic a lot, but I don't care about that. That just goes straight at my own ears. <laughs> uh huh? We all know about lawyers and their lying, lawyerly ways. Am I right, people? If I admitted I went to the store, I maybe would have dreamt of a false charge on me. A teeny, teeny bit. Well, it'd be like that. <laughs> I didn't want to get sent to hell. What do you say? He's right. That so would have happened. Now I see why that Defense Culpability Act was passed. You feel me, Kurain? Yeah, you said it. Is it too much to ask for a low-key trial? Now are you punks ready to rock or what? I can't hear you! I said you're ready to teach this lying lawyer how we do things around here? Yeah! <laughs> Alright, 
And I'm gonna lay it on you one more time. The screaming truth of my soul. Good on you, my guy. You say you went to the music storeroom. But how do we know you didn't go to the treasure room to steal the treasure instead? And on what grounds would you base that accusation? Got anything to show for it? He's right, I don't really have any proof. And yet... Well, you can't prove that you didn't go to the treasure room either! You stole the treasure and were ready to make your getaway when you saw Mr. Roll. So you panicked and ran into the music storeroom, isn't that right? I'm being a metal monk. <laughs> Not a day passes by where I don't think about... <laughs> a hippie slash stoner slash metal Jesus. <laughs> Why do I feel like I'm being stabbed by icy stares from every direction? This silence is your answer, lawyer man. This audience knows the score. Just what we needed. A moment of silence to bid this lawyer's baseless claim goodbye. Why do they have to hate lawyers so much in this country? Said it before and I'll say it again, lawyer man. After the priestess's dance, I went to the music storeroom. Okay, and we gotta go to the sixth one. Nope, fuck. This one. Where were you when the power outage occurred? Like I said, I was in the music storeroom. My girl had been sounding a little off, so I had to get her back in tune. Isn't it true that you were actually in the hallway at the time? Oh, you say? Why would I be in the hallway? You were waiting for Mr. Roll to come back from his patrol of the pre treasure room pressure. Now that he discovered that the treasure had been stolen, you were going to kill him. Lawyer man, just as always, so full of bull, spewing noxious lies and pulling the wool. I mean, you, you can't lie and say it's not a banger, though. Filthy liar through and through, and I am never ever gonna forgive you. Oh, nice! <laughs> Ooh, utter lies with no evidence. As always, his claims are just tenuous. Hey, nice, prosecutor. I'm picking up what you're throwing down. Someone stop their jam session, please. Mm. You made your assertions clear, defense, but your argument is rather unsubstantiated. That's not good. <laughs> What's so funny, peace love and understanding? <laughs> the fact that he used this whole fucking name, oh, that's like music to my ears, to be honest. Nevertheless, the possibility is still there. You can't deny the witness could have killed the victim under cover of darkness. Objection. You're forgetting one very important thing. Huh? It seems you've forgotten that the outage happened by chance, not design. Oh, that's right. Oh, that's right. I did forget about that. It's not like the witness planned the outage so he could take advantage of the darkness. And without darkness, it would have been hard to sneak up behind Mr. Roll and kill him. 
You're right. Even I would notice someone's coming up behind me. Well, Defense, what do you have to say about that? What can I say about that? Mr. Wright, your claim is completely without merit. Unless you want to argue that the witness somehow magically made the outage happen. Well, maybe not magically, but... Wait, that's it. I contend... I contend the witness could have made the power outage happen. With no magic necessary. What? You have a theory defense. All you had to do was make use of something shown in this diagram. What did the witness use to make the power outage happen? Well, that's fucking easy. Break her. The witness was in the storeroom. The circuit box is on the storeroom end of the hallway. And there's nothing really magical about turning off the breaker, wouldn't you say? Mm. Nice try, but that theory doesn't hold water, lawyer man. Why not? You're saying I turned the breaker off and then snuck up on Mr. Roland hit him. In pitch black darkness and with no source of light whatsoever. That's what you're saying? Um... <laughs> with the lights off, that hallway is blacker than a hundred midnights. You can't see the hand in front of your face. How could anybody commit murder like that? Unless it was somebody standing right in front of the victim, like the accused. I hate when he's right. But I can't just let this... just let his point stand. Well, maybe the victim was holding something that served as a guide. That... <clears throat> a guide through the darkness. Something that's more than a little vague. Wouldn't you agree? You ain't gonna move this room with a half-baked hunch like that, bro. You gotta hit him hard. Really make him feel it. You feel- you hear me? Just like my verse, baby. Woo! Mm. I'm afraid I don't understand the witness's lyrics very well either. But in the trial, your arguments have to be clear and precise. Let's see some of that clear clarity and precision now, defense. Uh-oh. What do I do? You present us to something that could have served as a guide through the darkness. I can. Yes, I can. Because there has to be something. Alright, let's see what you have, Defense. What could the victim have been holding that served as a guide through the darkness? This close in the dark. I believe the victim was holding the treasure box. Hmm? Huh? Huh? Have you gone mad? Well, the box glows in the dark, so you could use it as sort of a beacon. Hmm, well, I guess you're right. Why in the world would the victim be holding the treasure box? Oh, well, because... Your guess is as good as mine. What is this lawyer talking about? Nonsense and lies yet again. Just give him the death penalty already! Is there no way to win them over? Defense. Are we going to be needing those tongue shears after all? I you know, your majesty. Yeah, man, do it, do it, and we can jam out to this lawyer's shrieks of pain! What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Better get those screams of agony out now, lawyer man. Well, you still have a tongue to scream with. I, uh, guess I better come up with a reason. No pressure or anything. As to why the victim was holding the treasure box. It can easily be explained as thus. Brain, don't fail me now. What reason could the victim possibly have had to be holding that treasure box? The victim was holding the treasure box because he was... The thief. It's an idea that just hap I just happened to stumble upon. But I think I just... It just might be my answer. Be the answer. And it would turn this whole trial upside down. 
Hello? Defense, are you still with us? Let's hear this easy explanation you promised. Isn't it possible that it was because the victim himself was a thief? The victim? The thief? <laughs> what kind of bull are you spewing now? Your Majesty, this guy is off his rocker. If the victim was a thief, everything we've learned so far would all make sense. And it would give us a completely new way to interpret this, the victim's actions. After the morning dance of devotion, Mr. Roll went to the treasure room. He grabbed the box that contained the treasure and started to take, it, take off with it. Then he ran into Albi on the great stairs. That's why Mr. Roll pulled his gun on pulled his gun on Albi. Then, when the blackout occurred, Mr. Roll was bludgeoned to death in the darkness. And this explains why the victim would be holding the glowing treasure box in the dark. And how it could, would have been possible for someone other than the accused to kill him. Do you have any idea what you're saying? You're an unbelievable lawyer, man. I think you've lost it. <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever heard. Roll? Trying to roll the, roll the temple? That devout believer? Pious? Pious? God damn it, can I just... I want to say normal words, but there are normal words, I'm just... I'm not a native speaker. What the fuck is this? Pious? It is pious. Well, I guess. Pious. That's new. I won't allow you to disparage the victim's departed soul with unfounded allegations. I hope you're prepared to back up your claim. Of course, your majesty. Oh, really? In that case, can we assume you have proof? Uh-oh. Proof, huh? Do I have any proof? I can't back down now. Yes, I have proof. In my dreams. The proof that Mr. Roll was a thief may have been left behind on a certain piece of evidence. Very well. Let's see your evidence and be ready to stand behind it. Footprints, fingerprints. I'll take anything at this point. I need proof. Something that would have been involved with a, with a, with a, with a, with a theft. And that might still have some trace evidence left on it. What proof do you have that the victim might have been the thief? Treasure box. The defense would like to examine the treasure box. There might be trace evidence on it that would show that the victim had held it. Might. You better hope you turn up something more definitive than that defense. Yes, sir, your majesty. Very well. Bailiff, bring the treasure box. You are defense. You're free to examine it. If I don't find something now, my entire argument up to this point will be blown. Plus, there's that little matter of the old tongue shears. I have to find something. I just have to. Now, to make sure I remember how to do this. Yes, I know how to do this. I can rotate the evidence, I can zoom in and out, and if I ever get to, to turn around, I can always reset. Okay. I better search each every inch of this box carefully and touch every anything of interest to check it out in detail. Okay. There's a butterfly relief here. I've seen this same butterfly shape here and there all over Kurain. Interesting, but I guess it doesn't really help me prove anything. 
This is the lock. It was forced open. I don't really see anything else of note about it. Okay. So this is where the Founder's Orb was, huh? I doubt there is any trace of the orb left here now. Although, I don't really know anything about the orb, so who knows? Hmm, the lid of the box was forced open. And while the victim was holding the box, the lid must have been closed. I'll try closing the lid too. Hey. What? You son of a- You locked it! So? What's the big deal? I thought you can open it with that key you're wearing. Y yeah I can, no sweat. And why is there a bucket load dripping off- uh, dripping, dripping off of you over there? I think I'd like to open this box back up again. Could you lend me your Magatama key? Sure. Okay, let's see. Where's the keyhole? Well, it's the Magatama key. So wouldn't it go in the hole above the Magatama mark? Huh? It won't open. Hmm. <laughs> Would you look at that? The thief must have busted the lock when they forced the box open. Really? Because I'm not so sure about that. In any case, I'd better take another good look. I have to find proof that the victim was holding this box. This blood stain. It shows the outline of a hand. Could this be what I've been looking for? Your Majesty, take a look at this. There's a blood stain that outlines the shape of a hand. Really? Let me see that. Oh my! You were right. That's what happen happens when you do drugs, kiddos. <laughs> now I'm getting somewhere. I believe the blood stain is an outline of the victim's hand as he was holding the box. What? Even as he was being struck, he held on tight to the precious treasure box. After all, he'd gone through a lot of trouble to steal it. And the blood from his head wound splattered across his hand and onto the box. Your Majesty, don't let yourself be taken in. It's just more of his lawyerly deceit. What do you mean? <laughs> Mr. Wright, where is your proof that the outline is that of the victim's hand? What? I should have seen this coming. In fact, that's not where I want to go. I want to go here. Can, can... Can... Can Gaspin just, like, think before he speaks? At least a little bit? You know, make it a bit more difficult for me? Either show proof or prepare to meet the shears. Or you could save us all some time and bite your tongue out now and submit it instead. That I did not see coming. Defense? How about it? Do you have proof that the outline is of the victim's hand? Where would the proof of something like that even be? Please submit your evidence at this time. What evidence shows that the outline on the treasure box is that of the victim's hand? Did da 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 I've got it! This is the evidence that's going to solve, save my beloved tongue. <sighs> Mr. Payne, despite your claims about my forked tongue, it just so happens I have the proof you require. You do? It's right here in this crime photo. It is? Where? The fence, please point it out. What proves that the bloodstain outline on the box is that is that of the victim's hand? Ah, uh, here we go. Mr. Payne, take a good look at the victim's hand. See this? That's blood. What? If we place Mr. Roll's hand inside the bloody out outline, do you think the blood on his hand would complete the splatter? Exactly. Here goes nothing. 
And if they do form one complete splatter, it would prove my theory correct. And then the victim really was holding the box. I'm willing to bet my life on it. The defense reasserts that the victim was the thief who stole the treasure box. You can't be serious. I I protest. There's there's no way they would ever match up. I assert that it's patently impossible for ah! Talk about tongue karma. Sounds like he just bit his. What's the matter, Mr. Payne? Did your forked tongue get tangled up in there? Or were you trying to submit your own tongue to the court? Why, you're... Uh... I can hardly believe it. Apparently not everything out of the defense's mouth is a bluff. Of course not, your majesty. This tongue doesn't lie. And I'd like to continue to use my tongue in the future too, if you wouldn't mind. Never has to know what it... No, it really was a bluff. Oh, oh, Mr. Roll. I can't believe it. I'm sorry, Alvi. I know it's upsetting news. He must have needed the money badly. Probably to support his family. After all, he even gave up his dream of becoming a monk to help them. Oh, so that thing Mr. Roll would say to me. Alvi, you train hard and make sure you become a monk one day. Don't end up like me, he'd say. Yeah. He was probably warning you not to end up a thief. Mr. Roll! Objection. No, wait, just one minute. If the victim was the thief and he was holding the treasure box, and that means Mr. Roll was holding the murder weapon when he was killed. Oh, that's a very good point. Doesn't make much sense, does it? Objection! If the victim was holding the treasure box, it couldn't have been the murder weapon. Which means the real murder weapon must have been something else. Real murder weapon? It was something else? The blood was thought to have gotten on the box when the box was used as a weapon. But it turns out that wasn't the case. The blood splattered onto the treasure box the victim was holding. When he was struck with a real weapon, that's what really happened. Isn't that right, Mr. Understanding? Are you insinuating I'm the one who used this real weapon? Are you saying I'm wrong in my understanding? <laughs> you got me riled up, lawyer man. I feel a song coming on. Oh no, here we go again. Here we fucking go again. Here we go. Looking for a weapon that just doesn't ex that just don't exist. Pathetic lawyer man, drop into the abyss. Eh, the rhyme is a. Mm, meh. It's okay, I guess. The speak of a lawyer, man. Yo, you make me sick. You can disappear just like a magic trick. Worthless lawyer, man. Done in by a weapon. For you, miserable wretch, hell doth beckon. That's also a mm, rhyme. Yeah. I know I don't need to remind your defense that your life is on the line. I know your majesty. You're prepared to risk it on this mere idea of a real murder weapon. Death to the lawyer. <laughs> This is it. The moment of truth. I can't back down. Not now. Yes, your majesty. I am. I'm confident the real murder weapon does indeed exist. Ah. 
That's a bold claim, Mr. Wright. Now let's see you back it up. Show us which piece of evidence points to this real murder weapon. Gladly. If I knew which one it was, when would somebody like understand and use to bludgeon someone? Now then, defense, please submit your evidence to the court. Yeah, let's see it, lawyer man. Let's see this thing that shows the real murder weapon you say I used. Ah, okay, I see. Mm. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? The instrument, it's not the same. Take that! What I'm about to present is really nothing more than a possibility. This thin thread is all I've got. Now allow me to direct the court's attention to this photo of the morning dance of devotion. That photo? How is that going to help you, Mr. Wright? There's something about it that just doesn't seem sit right with me. Yeah, what's this something, hmm? This thing here is odd, to say the least. Take that! Mr. Understanding, why is the instrument you're holding different from the one you're playing in the photo? Look at that, they're completely different shapes. I believe you said your Damalin was your one and only. Well, Mr. Understanding, what do you have to say to that? <laughs> I got nothing to say. Then allow me to answer for you. They're different because the one in the photo is no longer in playable condition. Not after you use it to bludgeon Mr. Roll to death. <laughs> My old partner wasn't doing so hot, so I brought her sister along, that's all. Not a big deal, lawyer man. In that case, please submit your old demol into this court as evidence. Too bad, you're too late. I got rid of her yesterday. You what? Burned her up with the rest of the trash. Ashes to ashes, baby. <laughs> no! He's already destroyed the evidence. Let's see more trash right here in this court that needs to burn in the fires of hell. Lawyer trash. Mm. Well, there's no proof to show. Oh, come on. That was pathetic. Your agony can sound better than that. Where's that great scream of yours? This... this can't be how it ends. I think I've heard enough. <clears throat> it seems the defense is unable to produce evidence it needs to pro pr prove its assertion. But, your majesty, that's only because the witness destroyed it. Evidence is everything in court. Don't tell me you've forgotten this most fundamental principle of our profession. <laughs> profession. Without sufficient proof, your claim that Mr. Understanding is the murderer is no more than conjecture. Ah! <laughs> there's, n there's the painted, pained expression you've been I've been looking for. By the way, there seems to be one more thing you're forgetting. What is it now? 
You accused Mr. Understanding of being the thief. But the real thief turned out to be the victim. Uh-oh. And with that, Mr. Understanding's purported motive for murder goes out the window. Ah! Great point, prosecutor. You tell him. If I had been there, I could have I would have just collared roll and gotten the treasure back. There wasn't any reason for me to kill him. Now, was there? I there's no good counter argument to that. It sounds <clears throat> Sounds to me like Mr. Understanding has been completely wrongfully accused. How fortunate as it may be, I think it's time to hand down the verdict in this case. Not good, not good. Defense, I trust you understand what you will, what you yourself will receive for taking on this case. <laughs> oh, what do I do? The murder weapon's been destroyed, and now I got no motive. Poor Helby will be convicted, and I'll lose my life, too. Mr. Wright, you wasted this court's time and disparaged everything we hold sacred. We should charge you with Lee's majesty, in addition to the crime of abetting the accused. Yeah, you should pay for desecrating my good name. Bye bye lawyer man. Time for you to do some repenting in the Twilight Realm. This guy is guilty as sin. I just know it. He must have had some reason to kill Mr. Roll. But what? Come on, people. Let me hear you scream and shout. I'm gonna take this lawyer trash out. Exterminate, annihilate, exterminate, annihilate! The thing to do at a time like this is to turn my thinking around. I shouldn't be trying to figure out what understanding's motive was. I wanna see how- okay, it only zooms that far in. I should be thinking about what kind of situation would give him a motive. Did you steal it, he said. We know that Mr. Roll was a thief and that he had gotten his hands on the box. So then why? Why in the world did he ask Albi that question? And what about the treasure box would have prompted him to? Ah! Defense. It's gotten into you. I get it. Now it all makes sense. Like, Pokunka, man. What you trying to say? Muttering and squealing to yourself. Sounds like you knocked something loose upstairs. Your Majesty, please hold off on your ruling for just a little while longer. And tell me you're going to start begging for your life now. Oh, Your Majesty, that's not it. It's just that I realized something important. You've been operating under a serious misconception this whole time. A misconception, you say? That's right. A mistaken notion about the treasure box. But could this really be true? If so, there's still a lot to figure out. Very well. Let's hear what you have to say. Thank you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, this is just more of his nonsense. He's just stalling for time. This is your last chance, Defense. The second I find it really is nothing but nonsense. No amount of begging will stay my hand, understand? Yes, your majesty. Huh. We all know this is just going to be another one of your stupid bluffs. Now then, defense. What is this misconception you mentioned? And the thing we didn't realize about the treasure box was that it was empty. What if the treasure box was already empty from the start? What? What? Please recall that when Mr. Roll ran into Albion on the Great Stairs, he asked the boy a question. Did you steal it? He said. 
I also recall that Mr. Roll was holding the treasure box at the time. So why then did he ask Albi the question that he did? It is a bit peculiar, isn't it? Not at all, your majesty. Not once you realize that. By the time Mr. Roll got to the treasure room, the treasure box was already empty. I beg your pardon? Mr. Roll suspected that Albi had gotten to it first. Which is why he confronted Albi when he ran into the boy on the stairs. But how would the victim have known the treasure box was empty? He didn't have any way of opening it. Objection! Once a year, the victim had the duty of carrying the treasure box to the palace. He was so proud when he was put in charge of guarding the treasure box. He even got to carry the box to the palace for the New Year's rite. He would have been able to tell by the weight when he lifted it that the box was empty. Ah, I see. Yes, I suppose he would have been able to tell, wouldn't he? Mr. Roll most likely decided to at least steal the empty box. It's an important historical artifact in and of itself, after all. Uh -huh. well, what's your point, Mr. Wright? What does any of this have to do with Mr. Understanding? My point is this. He gave Mr. Understanding a motive to murder the victim. A motive? Mr. Understanding, keeping the treasure safe is one of your duties, isn't it? So if anyone had found out that the treasure was missing, you would have been accused of incompetence. From the moment Mr. Roll discovered that the, 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 that the treasure was gone, his fate was sealed. Because you decided then that he had to be silenced forever. That's absurd! I believe the stuff that comes out of this guy's mouth. This is all just a colossal joke. So then, what really happened to the treasure? It had been stolen long before this incident occurred. By Mr. Peace Lebanon understanding himself. Mr. Wright, will you stop at nothing to accuse Mr. Understanding? Your Majesty, please don't listen to these trumped up charges. The defense is grasping. Objection! The treasure box can only be opened with the key Mr. Understanding holds. Who else could have stolen the treasure? Objection! As I said, the accused stole the treasure by forcing open the box. Your Majesty, I call for a swift ruling. Hmm, I'm not ready to give my verdict yet. The defense has successfully presented a new possibility in this case. Yes, finally, a tiny shred of hope. Mr. Understanding. Would you care to make any statements in response to the defense's claims? This episode is so fucking long. Oh my god. This is all bull. My noggin's a rage cage and it's ready to explode, baby. Instructor, understanding. Please calm yourself. I'm not gonna take it. No, I ain't gonna take it. I dutifully watched over that treasure with pride. And now I'm getting accused of stealing it. This lawyer is a lying scumbag. Uh, you better believe I got something to say. Open up your ear holes, sheeple. Let's rock! Death to the lying, lying, lying lawyer! Stealing the Founder's Orb. Me? I did it? This lying lawyer's insult. No, no limit. All this time I guarded the orb faithfully. Sacred duty to the Holy Mother. Easy to see. Yeah, 
Hands and clean, yeah, the accused the accused did the deed. Forced the box open, no key did he need. Lying lawyer condemned him to hell. Kick him, throw him into a prison cell. Ha! Huh. Wonderful. I mean, we're almost at the end now, but oh my god. I was like, oh, I can start the other one. No. <laughs> right, and we've now heard from both sides. Either the treasure box was forced open by the accused, as the witness claim, or Mr. Understanding opened it, as the defense claims. Defense, this is your last chance to cross-examine the witness. Yes, your majesty. If you are unable to prove your assertions by the end of this cross-examination, then the DC Act will come into play, and both you and the accused will lose your lives. I understand. Life or death. It all comes down to this. Can I get, like, a bad ending here? I wonder. I don't- I don't really know. I can't really see anything about it. Mr. Wright. Don't worry, Albie. I'm here to defend you. I promise it'll be alright. Thank you. I believe in you, Mr. Wright. I know you can win this for us. And after we win, we can go see Miss Maya. Together. It's a deal. I can't let Albie down. I have to win this trial. Somehow, I have to prove that only understanding could have stolen the treasure. Your worst lawyer trash. This is your requiem. The last song you'll ever hear on this mortal coil. Third, press. The defendant didn't force the box open. That's a lie. In fact, you were the one who opened it. Isn't that right? Hmm. Come on, you just saw for yourself, didn't you? The lock was busted on account of the box being forced open. Oh, yeah. Well, there's your proof, right there. Ugh. Score one for the metalhead. Look, if the accused really didn't try to force his way into the into the box, then how do you explain why the lock was busted and wouldn't open up for you earlier? Hmm, how do I explain why the box wouldn't unlock earlier? Maybe there's a different way to open it. There's a different way to open the box! Huh? What are you talking about? There's a secret trick to opening it, to protect its contents from being stolen. And you're the only one who knows how it works, isn't that right? Are you for real? You've been watching too many movies, lawyer man. Ah, so you're one of those tourists. Honestly, Mr. Wright, did you come expecting magic and mystery around every corner? I'll have you no defense, and the kingdom of Kurain is not some sort of fantasy funland. Ah. Uh. It's true I don't have any real grounds to make that assertion, and yet... Oh yeah, I feel another song coming on. A little number about a crazy lawyer with wild fantastic ideas. The real method to open the lock, you say, delusional man. There ain't no other way. Huh. A new... Oh god, I keep forgetting his fucking voice. New verse, please do add it to your testimony, Mr. Understanding. Real method to open the lock, you say. Delusional man, there ain't no other way. Press. Delusional, am I? We'll see about that. My idea is that's called delusion, mixed up lawyer, drowning in confusion. Indeed, and the defense's sinful wrongdoing has made him lose touch with reality. Let's hear it. What'll it be for this sinner's flight of fancy? Nothing, because I'm not the delusional one. I just know there's got to be some secret trick to opening the treasure box. Really? And where exactly is the secret hidden? 
The secret is obviously hidden in... The key? There's obviously some secret hidden in the key. I'd like to examine it, if you please. You don't know when to quit, do you? Here, go ahead. Examine it all you like. Hmm. Nothing. I don't see a thing. Oh, defense. What have you discovered? I'm afraid I haven't discovered anything, Your Majesty. Here, I'll return it now. I told you. Didn't I tell you? Yes, yes, you told me. There is just no reasoning with this man. The accused forced the lock open, and there is no other explanation. That's right. He desecrated the box by opening it without using this Mitama key. Wait, what did you just say? Sing it as many times as I have to to get it through your thick lawyer skull. Only the Mitama key unlocks the treasure, force it and reap the founder's displeasure. No, that's not where I want to go, I want to go here. But this is a Magatama. Yeah. For the forgetful defense's sake, could you please add that to your testimony? If I have to, rub it into your brain, lawyer man. The Mitamaki unlocks the treasure corset. Okay. Do I? Objection! Just a minute, Mr. Understanding. You just called your key the Mitama key, didn't you? Huh. Didn't you originally say it's called the Magatama key? Mitama key, what's that? I don't know, Your Majesty. But apparently, it's a rather crucial question. What? What's the big deal? I said the wrong thing, so what? Simple slip of the tongue. An A for effort, Mr. Wright, but your grand standing betrays your desperation. I'm afraid a small slip of the tongue like that adds absolutely nothing to your argument. What say you, Defense? Is it an important detail? Judging by Understanding's reaction... I'd say it's everything my argument needs. Yes, your majesty, it's very important. This key is apparently not the Magatama key, but rather the Mitama key. And I believe this discrepancy holds great significance for the defense. Oh man, just a meaningless mistake. Insignificance. Mm hmm, you're riding the crazy train to nowhere, lawyer man. Come on. Ah. Your Majesty, please don't pay the defense any heed. It's all nonsense. Hmm... To tell the truth, I'm not really clear on what the defense is driving at myself. However, I am eager to find out. What? Defense, you will explain yourself like your life literally depends on it. Because it does. Now then, is the name of the key on an important detail? Yes, it's an absolutely important detail, I think. Because the Mitama key is connected to the Founder's Orb. I see. Very well. In that case, please show the court the grounds on which you are basing this claim. The grounds, Your Majesty? You can, of course, show grounds, can you not, Defense? Of course. What else can I say? Mm, I have to come up with something. Anything. Even if it's just a bluff. The Mitama key. Mitama. Hmm. There has to be something somewhere that ties Mitama and the orb together. Don't keep me waiting, Defense. What evidence shows a connection between the Mitama key and the Founder's Orb? Take that! What's that? The Song of Ceremony! 
All this time, the answer was right there in front of me. It's right there in the song of ceremony performed during the dance of devotion. Your Majesty, the song of ceremony tells of the treasure of the founder of Kurainism. But hidden within its lyrics, there's a secret behind how to really open the treasure box. Oh. Holy... Mother! Mm. How can that be, Defense? And the Song of Ceremony contains the following lyrics. When the butterfly embraces the Mitama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. I believe the Mitama here refers to the Mitamaki. Well, yes, it is the same word, but that doesn't mean... We've been calling this key the Magatama key. And that's why I inserted the key into the lock with the Magatama design on it. But that was obviously not the right way to use it. And I suppose you know the right way. I do, Your Majesty. To use the key properly, you have to first... I'm like, what does this mean? <laughs> Horizontally? Vertically. Vertically. If we turn the Magatama shape upside down like this. It becomes the Kurayani symbol of the soul. In other words, Amitama. Oh my. You're absolutely right. But now what? What do you do with it? It's too big to fit into the lock that way. Oh, um... <laughs> I knew he was just bluffing. Bluffs and lies are the only tools of his trade, after all. There must be some other place this key fits, but where? Let's see, when were the words of the Song of Ceremony again? When the butterfly embraces the Mitama, the favor of the orb is bestowed. Where should the Mitamaki actually be used? Goodness! Treasure box! Really opened. Way, man. What? <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is the real secret behind the song of ceremony. It's the true key to opening the treasure box. It's all over, Mr. Payne. How so? Say someone was fooled into trying to force the front-facing lock open. Sadly for them, it won't budge. That's because the lock is, after all, just a decoy. Then, what you're saying is... Neither the victim nor the defendant could have... Would have been able to open the box. They therefore had no way of stealing the treasure. The only one who could have stolen it is the one man who knew about the Mitamaki. Peace, love, and understanding. Also known as Hippie Jesus, Stoner Jesus, Metalhead Jesus. And I'm not done yet. Please recall the scene of the crime on the floor by Mr. Roll's body. It was a very unlocked and very open treasure box. Only someone who knew how to open the box could have left it in that state. <laughs> And so, there can only be- there can be only one true culprit. Admit it, Mr. Understanding. You're the one who killed Mr. Roll. Breakdown? Breakdown time? Breakdown time. Okay. Uh. Sir? Sir, you need any help?
Oh my god. Huh. Huh. Cool. Okay. Love that for you. Curse him. It's all his fault. Why'd he have to try and steal the treasure? Why did I have to spot him with that box? On my way to the storeroom after the morning dance. It's his fault I had to cause that blackout and bl clock him good. I couldn't let my secret get out. Nobody could, could know the treasure box was empty. I'd lose my position as head monk. Who knows what else they do to me. Couldn't let. I had to. I had to stop him. Yay! What a shocking development. I can scarcely believe it. Nothing like this has ever happened since the DC Act was enacted 23 years ago. Mm -hmm. Oh, my perfect unblemished record. Destroyed. The incredible pain. Ruined. No! <laughs> Did the lawyer really win? I can't believe it. No way! This can't be happening. Peace. I said peace. Honestly speaking, I am just as shocked as everyone else. But the truth has been made known, so it's time for me to give my verdict. In the name of the Holy Mother, this court finds the accused, I'll be your guide. Screw confetti, we get spirit butterflies, yeah. Hmm, there is still quite a commotion. The people in the gallery show no sign of clearing out. I can't believe it! Not guilty! I'm still in shock! Can you believe that guy? I can feel everybody's eyes on me. This can't be happening! It's impossible! Oh, holy mother! Preserve us! I've never been in, the, been in a defendant lobby quite this uncomfortable. Mr. Wright! Oh, Halby! Thank you! Thank you so much for what you did for me! I'm just glad it turned out okay. It was... touch and go there for a while. I'm really sorry, Mr. Wright. I... I had a really hard time trusting you at first. That's okay, Albi. I know how unpopular lawyers are in this country. Well, I didn't know at first, but now I know and I understand where you were coming from. But how did it ever get this way in the first place? Allow me to explain. At least, I wish I could explain. But I don't really know why. I never even questioned it before today. By the time I was born, all the lawyers were already gone. As far, as far back as I can remember, verdicts have been based on her benevolence insights. Right, Rafa, the royal priestess. You would imply that the trials of this country are unfair. Do explain, outsider. How verdicts founded on truths imparted by the very souls of the dead lack impartiality. For her part, I'm sure she really believes in what she says, but... Even with her benevolence's divination seances, lawyers are still necessary. Without proper defense, people could easily wind up receiving wrongful convictions. Mr. Wright! Shh! Huh? Don't say that so loud. People might think you're a rebel. You could be arrested. A rebel? That's right. One of those people going against our queen and the court system. They call themselves the Defiant Dragons. 
and they're led by a scary guy named Dirk. They'll do anything to overthrow her eminence, even commit crimes. Dirk, I remember people in the gallery mentioning that mentioning that name. The things you're saying sound a lot like the stuff they say. But you're not scary like that Dirk guy. Pardon the intrusion, who this? You, yeah you. I want to talk to you, see? Flight, is it? Right, sir. Phoenix Wright. And you are? I'm the Kurainese Minister of Justice. The name's Inga Karkul Kurain. I oversee the whole legal shebang. I was watching that three ring circus in there. You were? Wow, the Minister of Justice. So he's in charge of the entire court system, Defense Culpability Act and all. Minister Inga, how are you, sir? We're the long mini monk. Grown ups are talking here. Yes, sir. Very sorry, sir. May I help you with something? Just wanted a good look at you. Guys like you aren't exactly a dime a dozen around here. Huh. Well then. He's eyeing me like I'm some kind of exotic creature in a cage. Oh yeah, might as well share this little morsel with you. Turns out Roll was a seasoned thief, a repeat offender, see? Had my men look into it, and they found all the booty he'd pilfered right there in, in his digs. But he seemed like such a nice man. Why, Mr. Roll? Why? Because he was doing it for the family. What a mook. A mook? How can you say that? Hmm. <laughs> Guess that kind of sob story gets you common folk all misty-eyed, huh? Anyway, another thing. I had my men check out that understanding fellow too. He wasn't the one with the sticky fingers. It's the insurgents. He wasn't able to roll with the punches. <laughs> what? They put the squeeze on our head monk, apparently. So he gave up the founder's orb and tried to keep it hush-hush. Ow, I see. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, say, White. That was a cute little number you pulled in my courtroom today, wasn't it? First not guilty ruling in 23 years. You were making waves, see? Stirring the pot. Catch my drift? Oh, well, I... Yikes, I'm in for it now. Hmm. But thanks to that song and dance, we know our precious national treasure got nicked. So I'm gonna call it a wash and let it slide this time. And all I did was defend the accused. You do best to read between the lines here, chump. You're standing on thin ice. You get my drift? Even a dirty, no gut, good nick punk knows to cash in his chips before the, the house steps in. Do us both a favor and keep an eye on the path you're walking down. You never know whose toes you might be stepping on. This ain't your turf, buddy. Never forget whose soil it is you're standing on. Hikes. He was kind of scary, wasn't he? Yeah, well, no use worrying about it. We have more important things to think about. So just when we can... When can we continue the sightseeing tour? Tour? Oh, any time, sir. We still have plenty of time until Miss Maya's training ends. And there are still lots more temples to see. And all kinds of local foods to eat. I can show you the natural beauty of the area with the waterfalls used for training. And I haven't showed you the breathtaking mountain view from the Pasa Devotion yet. And there's the place when you can... When they dangle you. Where they dangle you? Hold on, what? They dangle? Uh... They dangle you off a really steep cliff that offers your soul a great view of the Twilight Realm. And walking on a bed of nails doubles as a foot massage. Uh... You know, the whole, uh, lying on a bed of nails thing works because your entire weight is, like, sp spread apart. If you're walking on them... No! <laughs> Unless they're, like... No. <laughs> I was thinking maybe, like... Mm thumbtacks, but I'm like, no, no, not thumbtacks either. Alright, alright, slow down, Halvi. There's plenty of time. And when we're done with all that, we can go see Miss Maya together. Yeah, you bet. Maya, 
I wonder how she's doing. Hope she's okay. This stream lasted way longer than I expected it to. Oh. So, how about that not guilty, jerk? I heard. Sounds like the winds of change are beginning to stir. <laughs> no, uh, well, but see, that changes like the second you like take a step. Because then all your weight will be over on on one foot, you know. So I don't I don't think it will work. Either way you slice it. <laughs> ah, okay. Sweet. That was the first episode. Lovely. Why did I, why was I gonna turn it off? I don't know. I'm I'm a bit out of it, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for tonight. So next stream. Mm, I know I'm at least gonna stream on my birthday, which is on Wednesday. Not that it's gonna be anything special, but. Uh, Yeah, I think I'm gonna take tomorrow off. Yeah. I'll be back on Wednesday. So... Yeah. It was fun, though. I can't believe we're on, like, the, the, the last, like, main series game right now. Um, I mean, we still have, like, another game after this though, the, the crossover game, which I still haven't played, so I'm excited for that. I'm really excited for that. Huh. Yeah. I'm not used to looking at this background. Oh my god, you can't even see the text up there. Well, you know, it'd be like that, I guess. I guess I can, like, move it down to the bottom or whatever. Can I, like, um... It's gonna take a while. Whee! <laughs> I'm gonna have to think of something for... The other scenes, though. <laughs> Just slide on down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, it looks so empty up there now. I don't like it. It seems strange. Well, I'm almost there. And there we go. There. Does that look all right? Sure. Actually... So yeah, next stream on uh, Wednesday, so I hope to see you then, when we'll get into the magical turnabout, which people aren't that big of a fan of, but you know what, it's whatever. You know it'd be like that sometimes. It might be a bit late though the stream uh i'm not really sure yet because i'm my sister and mom are, are coming over here to celebrate my birthday so um i don't know i don't know when they're they're planning on leaving <laughs> again 
they probably won't like staying for stay for like way too long so i don't know also yeah follow me on twitter i believe i should have my twitter linked in my about section Lights died. Good. I was waiting for them to die. Ah. Okay, now that I'm like, things are like coming more back to me. I I, I really like the, the 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 thing that Rafa does. I like it, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of like tied between that and uh, Mood Matrix for me, I think. They're kind of similar in a way because like... Uh, well, Athena's Mood Matrix is more about like the recollections and their testimony, you know? And uh, feelings. Whereas Rafa's is like actually like the deceased's last moment with the senses. So they're they're kind of similar, which is why I guess like they're kind of like on the same level for me. You know? It looks so empty up there now. I don't like it. I do not like it. <laughs> Okay, I'll figure out something I can do for this. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah, I can do a gradient, I guess. Not that the gradient won't, be, won't look very nice though, because... Yeah, because that. <laughs> The actual text looks like this too, so it's like really small. I guess we have background color then. You know, at least something. Wait, why did gradient gradient off? Please think. I meant. Uh, what was I thinking? No, wait. What? I don't know what the fuck I'm thinking about. What is it? What? I swear there's something that just like disappeared anyways. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there. That's the one I wanted. There we go. Well, it doesn't look the best, but, you know, at least now you can actually see what it says. Ugh. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, well, that was fun. What did we think about, um... Hippies, stoner, metalhead, Jesus. <laughs> Oh god, I remember losing it at his fucking breakdown. I remember fucking- oh my god, can I f fucking- I wonder if I can find it. I mean, I, I know I can find it, but I wonder if I can like, show it on stream. <laughs> Gold?
Is it this? <laughs> I think I found it on. Um. Oh, wonderful. I, I, I made some changes to my face cam, I guess. So hold on, let me go over here and uh, Grab this one real quick. So I can go over here and just uh, delete that, sure, and do this. There we go. There we go. That's way better. Um, so, yeah. Shut up for a second, please. So. Uh-huh. And nobody, nobody gets away with that. Please, don't, don't, don't sing a song. What is going on? <laughs> God, I, I was fucking... <laughs> also, where are the drums coming from? What? Sense. I hate this game. <laughs> also, me here. Are we sure his name isn't Rack and Ral? <laughs> Rack and Ral, I guess. <laughs> God damn. Uh, let me turn this down actually to. What was it? 40? I think so. Um. <laughs> of course I did that. Uh, and then there's this one. Sorry, I know the, the audio is really low, but... Is he okay? Well, he is clearly not okay. <laughs> yeah, me too. Oh, well, <laughs> you know. Damn, I wish I could uh, experience that for the first time over again, but... Uh, just... You know, it's okay. Oh shit, I think I may have showed some spoilers. Whatever. <laughs> well, it's not whatever, but... Pff, you know, it'd be like that. like and we're nearing the end now I maybe mean, we just started this game but like we're ending we're nearing the end of the games Ugh. it froze again well you know it'd be like that so well i'm gonna see you guys on wednesday on my birthday It would be really cool if I can make it to like 30 followers or something. I believe I have like 25 now. I'm not sure how many I have. Mute. Mute, damn it. Just can you fucking there we go. Um I 
have 24. And I think like 30 should be doable, you know? I also have to like start thinking about what I'm gonna do like after this. One thing I know I'm gonna play, but I don't know if I'm gonna play it here or if I'm gonna play it on the other channel. And uh, that is Miitopia when that comes out on the Switch. Because, oh yes, it's so great. Like we can just like have a fucking blast, make dumb me's all the time and just, you know, Look at me being fucking awful at RPG games. <laughs> huh. Oh, that was not a good one. I mean, what do I expect? It's literally just been sitting out there for like three hours now. Almost four. So yeah, with that, I'm just gonna end this here. Thank you so much for joining me today. And um, yeah. Hope to see you again on Wednesday. Peace.